Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that you too will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so, it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, may every mountain that stands before you fall. In the name of Jesus, may every mountain that stands before you fall. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My spirit is excited because somebody is rising. Sure. Hallelujah. You don't rise by chance. You write on the strength of knowledge. Mike said something that touched my spirit. He said, encounter with possibilities. I think, I think that's, that's, that's worth tweeting, trust me. Encounter with possibilities. That means that it's not working in my life does not mean it's not available. And trust me, this is where... God will activate new things in your life in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. Hallelujah. Listen. It's not, it's not enough to rise. You must rise intentionally. Listen. When you rise by mistake, you fear your success because you are not sure you can preserve it. But when you rise by light, it says, and I went up by revelation, not just by desire. I went up by revelation. Are we together? In one minute, I'd like you to pray seriously and say, Father, encounter with possibilities. Show me something that will accelerate my life tonight. Open up new chapters in my life. Hallelujah. God bless you. Walk to 10 people and tell them experience possibilities. Experience possibilities. Here at Koinonia, experience possibilities. Don't mind your mountain, experience possibilities. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Good evening, everybody. Luke 24. Good evening, everybody. Inside and outside, all those following us online. Good evening, or whatever time it is in the nation you are streaming from Luke 24 blessed be the name of the Lord who has given us wisdom and access to the mysteries of his kingdom 
Lord, we acknowledge you. We thank you. We are very grateful. You have made us wise. Wise through your word. Luke 24. Are you there? I'd like us to read verse 45. Luke 24 and we'll read verse 25. Luke 24 verse 45. Then open he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. I'd like us to read it together. I want to read. It means that the understanding of a man is like a gate in the spirit. Until it is opened, you cannot comprehend truth. You can look at it. You can hear it. But you will never receive anything. That's why the Bible says the carnal man cannot receive anything of the spirit because it is spiritually discerned and the secret to that discernment is that your understanding be open are we together now um, you can come and sit down and hear us teach and hear us talk no matter how anointed the communications of the spirit is until your understanding is open it cannot profit you that's why you can be sharing a testimony with someone that should bless the person and the person will turn and say so what I mean what about it their understanding the Bible says who the God of this world has blinded their minds their understanding so that they will not comprehend these things Lord give me understanding Lord give me understanding can you lift your voice and pray in one minute I'm not here to argue with you Shibra Kato Satali I already see the way my life is rising. Nothing will interrupt that ascension. I already see you making and bringing beauty and glory out of my life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You can't believe the song, but I'm hearing in my spirit. Oh, 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 Hold on, hold on, guys. Don't, don't mind me. Um, it's spiritual. Listen, listen. You know, if you are not spiritual, sometimes you will think we're just playing here. The Bible says the spirit and the bride tells the word to come. Are we together? So, the spirit hears what the word wants to do. So when the spirit says come, the bride must echo it too and say come. So you are reflecting what the spirit is saying. If he says come, you say come too. You are an echo. So if there is a sound of melody and thanksgiving, I'm only a conduit. Trust me, it's because someone's breakthrough. Someone's lifting. You can feel motivated and just sit down. But for someone else, he knows that this, this is not... Can we sing that song? We're going to sing that song and we're going to dance to the glory of God. Are you ready? Let's get the devil mad! Hey! Oh, 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 oh.
uses the foolishness. Listen, hold on, hold on, hold on. God uses the foolish things. Just this two, three minutes praise. You may think that it was just an entertainment or some youthful things, but no. It was the key to someone's Hallelujah. 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 We are going to shout one more time. Listen, hold on. You have shouted. Calm down. Relax. I know when the spirit of God is behind what is happening. I can assure you that we are sensitive people to the spirit. Listen, listen. Calm down. Please relax. Now, this shout is not an ordinary shout. Listen to me. I'm speaking to you. There is an anointing on the shout. And this is a shout of warfare. Listen. This is a shout of breakthrough. This is a shout of lifting. This is a shout that will turn captivity. Such an anointing. I pray that we'll be able to do something today, honestly. The waters have been stirred. The waters has been stirred. The waters has been stirred. Do you know why God does these things? Let me tell you. Some of the people you see under the anointing, it's not just impartation. The prophetic word of the Lord is coming upon their lives. Some of them you see under the anointing is direction. Some of you, the fact that you are not under the anointing, you may think you are not receiving anything. No, there's no such thing as that. The moment the word is coming, it's just that the reaction of the word of God upon the human spirit differs. Sometimes the impact of the word upon your spirit, that's what you see, just carries people literally because the word of God is living. Is that not what your Bible teaches? It is living. Living things move. Living things, I mean, they, they have a form. They can be felt. Hallelujah. If there is nothing to learn tonight, just the fact that the possibilities in God, listen, the possibilities in God are only limited by our level of alignment. 
not God's power. I was not born like this. Not God's power. Please listen. God chooses to speak to people in different ways. He can speak and communicate through his servant. He can speak through situations and circumstances. He can speak through signs and wonders. What you see are not just miracles. They are called signs and wonders. Why does he do this? To the end that we will believe him. We will trust him. Someone who is coming to Koinonia for the first time with all his, you know, knowledge about God would probably be seated now wondering. I mean, you are seated close to someone and you are watching God do these mighty things before them. How could you say it's a lie? I have made you too small in my heart. Oh, forgive me. And I have believed in the lie that you are unable to help me. But now, oh Lord. I see my heart Heal my heart And show yourself strong And in my heart And with this song Oh, be magnified Sing it from the depth of your heart. Be magnified, oh Lord. Be magnified, oh You are And there is nothing you can do. Sing it one more time from the depth of your heart. Be magnified. Aside to them, as the Holy Spirit has put in my spirit, a new beginning, a new beginning in your spiritual walk with God. The Lord is putting in you a fresh appetite for the things of the Spirit. He's putting in you a fresh appetite that will cause you to desire Him above and beyond anything. And the Lord is saying, that as you give him your time and give him your attention, he will use you mightily. He will use you mightily. He will use you mightily. In the name of Jesus Christ. <sighs> Amen. Let's sit down. Let's try to study something. Wherever we stop. Are we together now? Um... I will start wherever we stop. We can easily continue next week. Just be sensitive. I believe that a lot more impartations will happen even as I teach. 
One of the things that I've seen, especially recently, Oshas, that gentleman you are holding, hold on, he needs to be delivered. Just, just don't worry, he will go. But as you were lifting him, I didn't see him free. Lord, let him be free. In the name of Jesus, that gentleman there, I curse every devil. He came for koinonia, and I speak to that spirit. No matter how long you have prevailed over his destiny, you must let him go. This is a place of freedom. It's a place of emancipation. And Lord, I declare complete freedom for him. In Jesus' name. God bless you. There's been a lot of confusion in the body of Christ. Um, even among matured believers. Personally, I've had to take out time to study this subject. And is the subject of discerning the will of God. Please pay attention. What I'm teaching you now is very powerful. Very powerful. One of the areas of confusion in our lives and in the body of Christ is the inability to accurately discern the will of God for our lives. Hence, confusion even among the most matured of believers. There are so many of us who are unable to make progress in different areas of our lives because of our inability to accurately discern the will of God. I have taken out time in recent times to study this subject because I believe that it's useful in my own life and in the body of Christ. And I think that which I will share will bless you. It's a very broad subject, but wherever we stop, because I want us to pray. Hallelujah. I want us to really pray. So there's been confusion. Lord, should I stay in Zaria or should I be in Abuja? Lord, should I do this? Should I do that? The inability to create a system around our lives that helps us to discern what we believe God is communicating. There are people right now who have gotten married. They love God, but in their minds, they believe that their marriages were not according to the will of God. Are we together? Please pay attention. This is very important. There are people today who have been in regions where they believe it's not the will of God. There are people who are in all kinds of confusion and these things can create a lot of tenseness, a lot of worry. Um, is there a system in God by which a man can accurately discern the will of God. Are we together? Because the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 6, when you read from verse 10, Jesus teaching the disciples how to pray. He told them that the kingdom of God only comes when and if his will is being done. Are we together? So he ties the manifestation of the kingdom of God to his will, not your will. In fact, we see how much Jesus Christ so desired the will of the Father to be done. This is what he said in Gethsemane. He said, Father, if it be possible, this is my will now. Take this cup off me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. There are so many lives that are in a state of perpetual dissatisfaction. Some is almost like a stigma and a guilt they carry for the rest of their life because they feel that at one point or the other, they did not accurately discern the will of God. Businesses, jobs, marriages, ministries. There are many pastors who believe that they wrongly went to certain ministries. 
they just felt that, no, I did not hear God well. And the sad part of it, listen, is that there are people who took actions based on what at the time they were taking the actions, they perceived and believed it to be the will of God. Is God helping us tonight? So at the time they applied for the job, at the time they went abroad, for instance, at the time they did what they did, they believed and perceived at that time that it was the will of God. So part of the things that I'm going to be discussing today is what exactly is the will of God? What are the dimensions to the will of God? Can the will of God change? Are we together? This is very important. It will make us mature. And it will make us be able to walk circumspectly. Hallelujah. Because your advancement in life and my advancement in life will be tied to my understanding the will of God part time and the ability to take steps in that direction. Did you know I discovered especially recently that believers are not so rebellious. If they know what the will of God is, they have the stamina to follow along. The challenge usually and largely is that the will of God is not known. And so men are left in limbo as to what directions to take in their career, in their lives. And there have been all kinds of teaching and theories about the will of God. So pay attention. Hallelujah. The word logos, write it down please. L-O-G-O-S. Is the word that is translated in John chapter 1 verse 1 as word. W-O-R-D. Is the word logos. So when the Bible says in the beginning was the word. The word there is the word logos. And the word logos means the thoughts of a man. Please write it down. The thoughts, the thinking of a man. The word logos means the ideas of a man. The thoughts of a man, the ideas of a man. Number three, the word logos also means the desire or the intention of a man. So when we talk about the word logos, we mean number one, the thoughts of a man. Number two, the ideas of a man. Number three, the desires or the intention of a man. Then number four, the communications of a man. The speakings of a man. Which is consistent with what he's thinking. The speakings of a man. For most people, it's only number four that we know. So every time we say the word of God, what comes to our mind is just the communications, the speakings of God. That is correct, but the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. It says, for I know the thoughts, Jeremiah 29, 11. Please give it to us, Jeremiah 29, 11. It says, for I know the thoughts that I think. So we see that it does not start with God speaking. It starts with God thinking. Are we together? Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Right? Thoughts of good or of peace and not of evil. Right? To bring you a what? A future and an expected end. Not just an end. An expected end. I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. They are thoughts of good or thoughts of peace. So God is thinking. Now listen, the will of God represents his idea, his desire. Are we together? His thoughts for a man, for a people, that's the will of God. So when we talk about the will of God, there's no mysticism around it. It's a communication of God's desire, his intent, his idea on that subject matter or on your life. 
The will of God represents his thoughts, his idea, his desire for your life or for whatever subject it is that you're considering. Now, I want you to know something about the will of God. Listen, the will of God is applicable only as far as his purposes are concerned. This is very important. The will of God is applicable only as far as his purposes are concerned, meaning that anything that does not directly um, culminate to the birthing of the purposes of God, his will, of, his will is not committed there. You are not going to hear God's opinion over a matter that is not directly tied to the advancement of his kingdom. Are we together? Let me give you an instance. I can't remember what I ate today, but I can assure you that it was not God that told me to eat it. Are we together? If I decide to take this water now, it was not the Holy Spirit that spoke to me. Are we together? Because come, whether I take swan water or um, ragolis or whatever it is, that activity does not in any way interrupt the advancement of God's kingdom. Are we together? So the will of God in terms of his sovereign desire is not committed to act there. He gave man a will also. Follow me. Now, the will of man is also useful as far as our work in this kingdom is concerned. So there are two wills here. There is the will of God or what I call the sovereign will of God because there are different theological explanations about the will of God. There is what, according to theologians, when you read Romans chapter 12, when you read um, um, from verse 1 and 2, verse 1 specifically, right? It talks about, uh, verse 2, sorry. It talks about the good, the perfect, the acceptable will of God. That's not my subject of discussion today. Those are just theological understandings and there is a place for them. But my, my assignment is to help us understand how to discern the will of God. To ask God whether you should bob your hair or not is silly because according to his wisdom, that matter is within the jurisdiction of your human will to solve. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Whether I bob or I don't bob, as far as my assignment and the advancement of the kingdom as committed to me is concerned, it is inconsequential. So really God does not care. But for Samson, it was a serious issue because his babbing or no babbing contained the secret to his strength which made him a judge over Israel. And so because of that, God had to put his mouth even in the issue of his hair. So God is only committed and he will manifest his will along the dimensions where the advancement of his kingdom is concerned. Do you understand? This is very important. The third thing I want you to know is your human will is useful and it can make decisions also that are consistent with the will of God. There is the human will. In fact, to be honest with you, the one factor that makes us different from every other creation is that God gave us a mind. And in that mind, there is what we call um, psychologically and theologically also will, emotion, intellect, right? The three components that make up our soul, our will, our emotions, and then our intellect. Is God helping us now? So, in birthing the purposes of God, there is a mutual interplay of the will of man and the will of God. There are certain decisions, please pay attention, there are certain decisions where God will never allow the will of man to contribute in the decision because of the gravity of that activity with respect to his kingdom. Are we together? There are certain activities that God will leave to the jurisdiction of man's will because regardless of what option the man takes, it will not directly affect him. Listen, if God took away the will of man, then he will be wicked. Because man would not be serving him willingly. 
So he made two trees in the garden of Eden. Are we together? One he called the tree of what? Life. Is that true? And the other was called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Why would God put two trees in the garden? I mean, he would have just annihilated everything that could cause man to fall. But he put those two trees. And then he told man, he said, man, this is my option for you. I want you to live eternally. Right? And so on and so forth. However, of this tree, do not eat it. Of this tree, you can eat it. Freely eat of any tree. And then man chose to violate the purposes of God. That leads me to the next point. The will of man can superimpose over the will of God. God is helping us tonight. The will of man can superimpose over the will of God. That's not to mean the will of God is weak. That's how much liberty, that's how much dominion, that's how much of the God class this man has been made to function in. An example of this, according to God's divine order and predeterminate counsel, the nation of Israel were never supposed to have an earthly king. Are we together? It was God's design that his sovereignty be felt even by man. And so he always wanted to be their king. A nation of people who had God only as their king so that they would not be tempted to get into human worship or idolatry or any of such kinds of things. But the Bible says the nation of Israel themselves, they came together and they said, give us a king. Are we together? The crowning of Saul as king was never God's intention. Read your Bible. The people pressured the prophet Samuel. And he went to God and God said, well, if they want a king, so be it. And Saul became the king. And from there, different kings started coming. Is God speaking to us? Are we getting blessed? What then, brothers and sisters, is the key to accurately discerning the will of God? At what point in my decision-making process am I left to my will alone? At what point in my decision-making process should my will completely step aside? At what point in my decision-making process? Because there are things, listen, there are things that our human wills can execute. And so leaving it up to God is a waste of time. We may never get results in some of those areas. I'll give you an instance of one of those fallacies. Financial prosperity, for instance. Here's what people say. If it is the will of God to bless me, he will bless me. You get the point now? So if I am not blessed, my assumption is that what? It is not the will of God to bless me. So I am comfortable in poverty. I am comfortable in failure. I'm comfortable in mediocrity. And when they ask me, I say, I have a, a, a premonition in my mind that if God wants to bless me, he's so mighty, he can bless me. Are we together? Now, all through scripture, listen, there are times when we see through the character of the dealings of scripture. And that's one of the importance of scripture. Right? The Bible says scripture is profitable. So when we study scripture, among the many things we get is we understand the character of God's dealings with man. We know how God deals with man. Many times in scripture, we see that prophets, for instance, prophesied as commanded. Is that true? They prophesied as commanded. You know that although um, they played a role in speaking, they did not contribute to altering what was communicated. There were times when prophets spoke. They spoke in their capacity as prophets. It was never because God said it. They stood upon the strength of their human wills and prophesied. Is that true? The transference of leprosy from 
uh, what's the name of that man? From Naaman to Gehazi, it was at the personal discretion of the prophet. Simply because the guy went and chased Naaman and said, Elisha has changed his mind. He said he should give some of the money. Are we together? So we now see that in that act, at his discretion, I'll give you another example. When the children were laughing at Elisha, the Bible says by himself, he called a bear out and it ate them. So we see all through scripture that the wills of men found expression over certain matters. Now, there are two dimensions of the will of God because that's our emphasis. There are two dimensions of the will of God I want us to discern and I want us to understand and discuss tonight very briefly and then we'll pray. Number one is what I call the written will of God. The written will of God. That means the will of God as expressed in scripture. I told us from the beginning of this discussion that the word logos is translated the thoughts of a man, his intention, his desire, his speakings. Now, look up please. The Bible is a compendium of God's dealings with man. Are we together? It is the way he has been dealing with man for many years. And this Bible, theologically speaking, we are told it contains 66 books, you know, but of course there are lots of theological perspectives like the Apocrypha and other extra biblical texts, the books of Jasha and the Black Sea Scrolls and all of that. There are other books that um, the book of Enoch and several dealings, other books that were written by other apostles like Thomas and the rest that did not make it in the 66 books. But theologically, we accept that by the wisdom of God, that this is a compendium of what we call the Holy Scriptures as given. Are we together? Now, from Genesis to Revelation, as we know, is a recorded, um, a documentation of the dealings of God with man. You see the dealings of man with, indi the dealings of God with individuals, cities, kings, backsliders, animals, people in their, the apex of their spiritual life, people at the lowest level. The, the goal is that by studying this, among the many other things I receive, I can be able to see the synergy of God's character. Are we together? So, by my, my intimacy with the word, I come to a point where experientially I can discern what would have been the dealings of God in this matter based on what he has written. It's called the written will of God. Everybody say the written will of God. Say it again, the written will of God. It says, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. And then it says, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. Is that true? Very, very important. It says, heaven and earth will pass away, but not one jot will come out of his word. And so we believe that the scriptures are holy. They were not written by perfect men. But then the Bible says, holy men wrote it as they were moved of the spirit. So regardless of their temperament, regardless of the, the manipulations in translation, I don't want to begin to give you all the, the church history behind the formation of these 66 books because it's a lot of stories. Are we together? Certain editings in this Bible as we know were not done by those who wrote it. It was done by a class of theologians and different people who translated the Bible and made it consumable for us. Like the King James Version. Being one of the earliest versions, the story of King James is a very old story. The man who authorized that this be translated purely in English and be communicated to people. It's a long story. Are we together now? But then as we know it, because there are many people who would argue that these scriptures are not complete. And truly speaking, when you study the theological dimension of the word, you will find out that there are certain translations or communications that were an error of the translators. 
Are we together? It did not hold the original thoughts of those who were speaking. For instance, when you read the encounter of John the Baptist, I mean, uh, John the Revelator, where he says, the Lord speaking to him, I am Alpha and Omega. The word and Omega, there is an error in translation. There is no and. It is, I am Alpha, Omega. But the communication of um, the Old Testament was written in Hebrew, and the, Greek test the, the New Testament was largely written in Greek and Aramaic. So that was the communication. And sometimes in these translations, the men who did the translation themselves um, judge certain things based on their spiritual limitations. However, the Holy Ghost has been able to breathe upon this such that even with the imperfections, it is enough to be able to guide you to understand God. Are we together? So the imperfections in the Bible notwithstanding, they are not so grave as to confuse a Christian. Is that true? Now look up please. Before this book, this Bible as we know, was released to believers. Because our generation, we were born and we grew knowing the Bible to be available. Is that true? But that's not the way it was in the old times. In ancient times, they were not giving, you did not go home with a Bible. The Bible, as we know, were called scrolls. Are we together? And these scrolls contained the Pentateuch, the five books of Moses, called in the Hebrew, the Torah. Are we together? These five books were kept together with the prophets and other writings of these people. They were kept and uh, other documents that we call the annals of the kings, the dealings of kings, they were kept in the temple. The priests were the custodians of these scrolls because they were precious. So what would happen is that it's still practiced in the Anglican sometimes. You see that they have um, different um, pulpits and with one there is a big Bible that is permanently left there. If you are taking the first reading or the second reading, you don't come with your own Bible. You just come and it's open. You look for the scripture. You read and go back. That was the way it was in Luke chapter 4 for Jesus. Because the Bible says that one time he came to the temple and it was given to him. He didn't come with it. Are we together? It was given to him the prophecy of Esaias. The messianic prophecy. Isaiah 61 was the messianic prophecy. It was speaking about Jesus but then prophetically to the church. Is God helping us now? And so when... Um, Jesus began to read that one. The Bible says he folded the scroll when he finished and kept it back and said, this day, right, is this fulfilled in your ears? So the first operation or the first dimension to discerning the will of God is the understanding of the character of God as communicated through scripture. That's what I mean by the written will of God. The written will of God entails understanding his character, not necessarily his unique instructions, his character, to know how God would have operated over certain matters. Now, listen, whether you read the Old Testament, you read the New Testament, you read the law, the prophets, the gospels, the epistles, or the book of Revelation, it doesn't matter what dimension. Every book of the Bible contains um, either directly or prophetic representations of God's dealings with man. Now, when I study the Bible, listen, what is happening to me is that I'm bringing my spirit to oneness with the way God does his things. Are we together? That's what we call righteousness. There is the gift of righteousness, but there is the operation of righteousness where you understand God's ways of doing things. Are we together? Then the second dimension of this written word are direct instructions that are written in the Bible. Direct instructions. There are certain opinions of God you did not live in the dark. It was clearly stated. One example. There is nobody who 
gets up right now, a man wanting to marry a man, are we together? And then he's trying to pray or find out, is it really the will of God for me to marry James or to marry Junior or to marry whoever? The will of God on that matter was not left in the dark. Therefore, shall a man, a what? Leave his father and mother, comma, and cleave to his. Are we together? And they too shall become one flesh. So two men, scripturally, cannot become one flesh. Two women cannot become one flesh. Are we together? So you do not attempt to use any other strategy to seek the will of God on that matter. The will of God is written, is clear. It's up to you to align with that will or rebel against it. Let me tell you something about the will of God as written in scripture. God does not necessarily punish people. His laws were designed with consequences attached to them. So, violating those principles expose you by default to certain things. He says, he that breaks the hedge. He didn't say, I will bring a serpent. He that breaks the hedge. The serpent will what? Strike. Bring ye all the tithes into my storehouse that there may be meat. That is my will. I want to increase you, but this is what I have put. And if you refuse, you can choose to refuse. But the moment you choose rebellion, you also choose the consequence that comes with it. The devourer. So God will never cast the devourer out of it. The devourer is roaming around. Your own assignment is to exempt him from your vicinity. But he is there. Are you getting what I'm saying now? The written will of God. Now, let me tell you the truth. There are many aspects of our lives where by faithfully studying the Bible or being open to quality teachings of the word of God, we are brought into an experiential comprehension of the will of God. All that we teach that we call the laws of the kingdom are a communication of God's will to prosper us. Now you may be asking, is it God's will for me to prosper? You go to the Bible, right? I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Say at who? Not a prophet, the Lord. Thoughts of good and thoughts of peace to bring you. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. This book of the Lord shall not depart from out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate during day and night that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein. Then shalt thou make your way prosperous and thou shalt have good success. So is my prosperity left in the hands of God? No. It left the hands of God since. He said thou shalt make your way prosperous and thou shalt have good success. Can I go to heaven poor? Yes. Will I live in heaven on earth? No. Are we together now? The will of God. Now, let me tell you something. Every time you desire to know the will of God, the first place to find the will of God, I know why I'm taking our time to teach this. Because when I talk about the second dimension, then we're going to talk about a lot of other things if there's time. If there's no time, we we'll continue next week. The word of God or scripture is the primary instrument for discerning the will of God. Please write it down. Scripture is the primary instrument given to men by God to discern the will of God. Your chances of walking in error are greatly minimized when you consult the Bible first as the basis for your comprehension of the will of God concerning a matter. I say this because our generation is gradually drifting away from our perception of the will of God as written in scripture to other extra biblical methods. And while they are useful, they are only secondary and inferior as a matter of fact to the written word of God. Say the written will of God. Look up please. Do you know why many Christians 
are largely confused almost about everything let me admit to you that many Christians including preachers don't study their Bibles they don't study their Bibles if they want to teach on faith they just go online and Google faith any material that comes out they just pick the scriptures for the teaching but they don't settle down to study the Bible not studying the Bible will keep you in the dark as regards God's will that has already been written there are so many people years ago when we were a lot fewer before koinonia started um, all of us used to participate in holy ghost baptism you know we used to pray for people every night that was how we socialized by getting people filled with the holy spirit and um, i remember most times people would come and they would complain and say i wasn't filled i was prayed for in church and i was not filled with the holy spirit the pastor was even angry with me and he said maybe i'm possessed or whatever it is or i should go and come back but that recognition i remember one of the key things god gave me as a revelation was the fact that he desired for everybody to be filled with the holy spirit with evidence of praying in tongues i searched these things scripture after scripture until I came to a point where I was absolutely convinced that everyone should be filled with the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in tongues, regardless of denominations. And that culminated into a dimension of confidence in me. Because every time I prayed for people, regardless of their hardness, I knew and I expected them to be filled. You see, when the will of God is not known, your confidence shakes. When the will of God is not known over any matter, your confidence shakes. The word of God was given to us as an instrument of discernment to help us understand his perspectives. Quickly, let's look at the second dimension. The second dimension to the discernment of the will of God is his revealed will. Or the second dimension, if you want to look at the will of God, his revealed will. Revealed will. Revealed will. Revealed will. And the, the nature and the operation of this will, please look up, is on matters where you directly would not get a direct word for from scripture. Are you getting what I'm saying? Issues that concern maybe business, issues that concern marriage, issues that concern certain things that are personal and unique to you. Now, there are times that you will need to make decisions. Please listen. And these decisions, you may not find a direct scripture so that you can get clarity as to what God will want you to do. There's no place written in scripture that says that you should remain in Zaria and be planted in Zaria. Are we together now? You can find scripture about Isaac remaining in, in a land sowing and you can find scripture about people remaining in a land and dying. So you see that's confusing. On different occasions people did the same thing. Let me tell you something about the Bible. That's why we need this second dimension. There are a lot of things that seemingly look conflicting about the will of God. That's why we need his revealed will. Is that true? The revealed will of God communicates his unique desire over the personal issue of concern in your life. The revealed will of God communicates his personal desire. You must understand this. It is unique to you Look up. Let me just go ahead of myself very fast. The unique will of God for me may not be the unique will of God for you. It is dangerous to transfer the communications of God as given to you to someone else because his revealed will comes tailor-made to address the unique situation in your life. Are you getting what I'm saying now? For instance, in the meeting when we were about to start, you saw us doing a lot of foolish things. It was... The reception 
my discernment on the will of God. He wanted to touch people and bring breakthroughs. And the method through which it will be carried out was also revealed. Are we together? The moment I received it, all that it was left was that I obeyed. And then God brought the performance. Now, if you get up and copy what I did and go to a meeting tomorrow and tell everybody shout, they may shout and jump up and down and they pass a paper to you and say you have five more minutes. You have wasted time and wasted the people's time. And then you are angry. The revealed will of God is for our personal advancement. You do not create doctrines out of the revealed will of God to you. Because the revealed will of God to you is as a result of so many things. There are many factors. Just follow me. We are going somewhere. So we have established the fact that there are two dimensions to the will of God. There is the written will of God as communicated in scripture. The written will of God does not have exceptions. Everybody who must work with God in that area must subscribe to what he has said. God will not create an exemption to the rule just for you as far as it is communicated in the Bible. But the revealed will of God describes his unique communication to you based on your personal need. Are we together? Am I, are, we, are we following together, please? Hallelujah. An example of situations that will require the revealed will of God. Number one. I'm giving you a few examples. You don't have to write them. But number one, imagine that Shadrach is trusting God now for where to settle down as a man. I hope you know that if you do not love God and you don't know God, usually you work with your instincts and guess your way around. If it's not God's will, you pay for it. If your instinct suddenly leads you to God's will, you enjoy breakthrough. Most people use instincts. And instincts are a provision from God. But when with the knowledge he knows now, he wants to discern the will of God. You can take your Bible and open it and not directly find where it is written. Or Shadrach wants to ask, oh God, when do you want me to settle down maritally? There's nowhere in the Bible written where you'll find and Shadrach married 2016. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So at that point, you will need to tap into another source of supply to communicate to you what God wants. Let me tell you something. Brothers and sisters, I submit to you, it pays to walk in the will of God. Don't ever let anybody preach you into believing that you can compromise the will of God and make progress in life. No matter what price it takes to be confident that you are walking in the will of God, pay it. It pays. Knowing the will of God gives us confidence. That's why we cast out devils. Because his will is communicated to us. That's why we walk in the anointing. We saw it, we read it, we understood it, we believed it. But the confusion in the body of Christ now is on the revealed will of God. And it's a very technical dimension of walking with God. And so I came up with a few ways. I'm going to give us very quickly... Three ways, three ways to discern the revealed will of God. Three major ways. There may be many, you may find them in many textbooks, but three major ways. To discern the will of God. Ready? Number one, peace and joy. Write it down. Believe me, brothers and sisters, don't trivialize what you are hearing. Peace and joy. The Bible says, look up. It says, the kingdom of God, when it is manifested, it is not in meat and drink. Right? But it is in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Many believers have walked out of the will of God the revealed will of God because they neglected the peace of God. The Bible says the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. Let it garrison your heart. That means the moment I'm about to take a decision, 
or I'm trusting God for a revelation over a decision and your peace supernaturally ceases and there is no joy. Let me tell you, joy is not happiness. Hear me. There are times you will be weeping and yet have joy. Joy, don't confuse joy with happiness. Happiness is circumstantial. If I give you 1,000 naira, I expect you to be happy. Not necessarily joyful. There's a song that we used to sing. I still have joy. I still have joy. After all I've been through. I still have joy. I still have peace. I still have peace. After all I've been through, I still have peace. So joy and peace, let me tell you, there is no man who is not born again who can have peace. He says, peace I give you. Peace is only truly experienced. Not, it's, it's not just the word shalom. Shalom just means a state of rest, right? Nothing missing, nothing broken. No. That's not the word that is used there. He said, the best way to describe that kind of peace was a description of the psalmist. He makes me lie down in still waters. Peace and joy. There are many of us, look up please, as pastors, as leaders, as individuals, as business people, we have been praying and trusting God over certain decisions or we are on our way executing certain decisions and your peace is lifted. Let me tell you, the absence of peace is the absence of the presence of the kingdom, which is the absence of the will of God being done because connecting these two scriptures, the will of God done, his kingdom comes. And his kingdom is made of peace and joy. So wherever the will of God is, finds expression, there is peace and there is joy. Say amen. amen. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding. He says it's to garrison our hearts. Praise the Lord. So a lady is about to get married. Please listen. What I'm saying is very serious. I want us to pay attention. God put this in my heart and I believe it's a blessing for all of us. Are we together? You may be born again. You may be tongue talking. Now watch this. Um, my dear, come. Let me use any of you. Come. Now watch this. This lady, watch this please. I come and ask this lady out as an anointed man and she loves God. She knows I'm a responsible person. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm using a case study now. To show you how to communicate and to discern the revealed will of God. And then, all of a sudden, she wants to tell me yes. Now listen. But in her place of prayer, something is happening to her peace and her joy. Let me tell you, when your peace and joy lives, especially when there is no physical reason for it, it's a language in the realm of the spirit. Don't you ever ignore it. When you lack explanation as to why you do not have peace over a matter, it's a sign to go to God. No matter what you are doing, stop where you are and find out. I don't know why I started with the issue of marriage, but let's continue. God is speaking. Listen. Listen carefully. Do you know that this lady may have her peace and joy being threatened every time she's, she thinks of saying yes to me. Now, it's up to her to numb the peace and bind it and cast it and get married to me and then after many years, what her peace was saying later plays out. Have you seen people who say, I knew it? Every time they get into trouble, they say, honestly, and I knew this thing. God was telling me, I didn't listen. Let me tell you something. The language of peace and joy are standard spiritual languages. Standard spiritual languages of communication. God is helping somebody this time. Now listen, do you know that God may be speaking to this lady and say, there are three things. Her being afraid of answering me based on what she's feeling can mean three things. Number one, it can mean that as good as I am, as good as she is, 
we are not the will of God for ourselves. It's as simple as that. You don't have to be bad. Number two, listen. It can be that I am of God for her. However, there are issues in my life that can implicate our marriage in the days to come. So the peace refuses to leave you until that issue is dealt with. Assuming there is a covenant and I come from a family where all the women that marry men die. That's what is about to happen to that lady. And so God is that lack of peace. God is saying this may be your will, but there are issues to resolve. Now it's not the issue of marriage. There is a spiritual issue or for instance, God forbid, but God may be speaking and say, Joshua Selman, if you marry this lady now, she may have a problem with barrenness. There is a spirit that is roaming around this life that may cause barrenness. And he's saying, I am seizing your peace so that you will deal with that issue. Have you not seen people when they are delivered, they can get up and fall in love afresh. It's like after that deliverance, they get up and they are ready to move because the barrier has given way. We ignore these things and we pay for it. Are we together? A businessman is about to get into trouble and he's calling you to come and partner with him and you love him sincerely but every time you want to move something in your spirit just tells you hold up and you just say no way anything that will stop my breakthrough you see let me tell you don't just be too scientific with God there are times you must maintain your spirituality at all times one little communication of peace can help you there are many ladies as you are looking at me right now you have gotten into needless troubles if only you listen to the prompting of peace and joy. Peace was speaking, your eyes were seeing money and you followed your way to the grave. Are we together? Peace. Peace. I remember one time, a lady who was getting married, they had even gone very far, very far, as in it was almost that time. And the lady called me and was crying her life and said for over three days she had not slept. She said it's as if she's entering hellfire. Literally, you get up. Sometimes she said she can shake physically. I said something is wrong. Run to your pastor. Go and talk to him. She said, ah, but too many people have been committed. I said, who are the people? Who are the people? They would dance on that day and leave you. Let me tell you something. Be strict about walking in the will of God. I'm only using marriage as a case study. But it applies to every area of your life. Please, I love you and I want to be your roommate. And the moment you, you move something in you, just says no. And you are wondering, ah, but this brother or this sister is, I mean, the sweetest person as can ever be. They don't have to be bad for your peace to leave you. We are talking of the will of God here. The will of God is as designed by God. Many of us think that when our peace and our joy leaves over an issue, it simply means it's wrong. You want to travel and your peace and joy leaves. It doesn't mean you are going to have accident. You will arrive safely. It's just not consistent with the will of God for your life. Danger does not have to happen to prove that a thing is not the will of God for your life. It can happen as planned, which is even more dangerous. Is God speaking to someone here? Peace and joy. Number two. Dreams, visions, and prophetic experiences. Dreams, visions, and prophetic experiences. I wish I didn't have to talk about this because I can spend, thank you my dear, I can spend a whole night vigil talking about this a whole night vigil talking about this dreams visions do you know satan has so metamorphosed in his technology of manipulating dreams and visions right now to an extent that many people are even afraid of their dreams and visions the devil is a liar in the name of jesus christ let me tell you something anything that is written in the bible is still being used by god is still a valid tool I know that there are all kinds of perversions. There are many of us, if you hear dream and vision, resentment comes in your heart because almost 95% of everything you have seen as dreams and visions either did not happen in your life or backfired on you. So because of that, you hate dreams and visions. That's not true. The Bible says, Joel chapter 2, 
He says, I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Are we together? And then he says, your young men shall what? See visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. So visions and dreams and supernatural experiences, though being perverted, is still a tool that God uses to communicate his revealed will to people. If I begin to tell you how and why dreams are perverted, we we'll have to go into the subject of demonology, the operation of demons. And I'm not sure our time is, is, is up practically, so we'll just leave it for another time. But let me tell you something. Dreams can be manipulated. Visions can be manipulated. Prophetic experiences can be manipulated. However, however, listen to me. There is a way you work with God to an extent that your dreams and visions become express revelations. I know people today who are working effortlessly in the will of God thanks to dreams, visions, and solid, notice my use of word, solid prophetic experiences. Not opinions. Solid prophetic experiences. Not, oh God, if it's your will, let boss carry us after koinonia. That's not a wise that's not a wise riddle that you play with God. A lot of us do a lot of stupid things. Lord, if it is your will, as I'm coming out, Charles must tell me good evening. That means I should, I should go home after exams. You know, all those kind of things are not wise. We, we fool ourselves when we do that. Look at me. When Herod was planning to kill baby Jesus... Did you know that it was a dream? Huh? Imagine if Joseph got up and said, ah, that dream killed with Jesus. Jesus, they would, have, they, would have, they would have butchered him into pieces. The only thing is he wouldn't have died because he's the one. Are you getting the point now? But he would have sabotaged his agenda because he was wearing a human body. He was in all ways tempted like us, meaning he could face our limitations. A dream. Joseph was going to divorce Mary. He found out that Mary was pregnant and Joseph said, you too, you know, I'm not part of this. I don't know what happened to you. I'm about to leave you quietly. The Bible says he was going to leave her quietly and it was in a dream. The angel said, uh -uh, do not be afraid to take this woman, right? That's this and that for that which is in her, that holy thing, it shall be called the son of the highest. And on the strength of that dream, Joseph came and said, no problem. He continued with her. Dreams. Dreams. The salvation of Egypt was in a dream. The king slept and he had a dream. Seven seasons of plenty, seven seasons of lack. He got up with that dream. Someone interpreted the dream, built a strategy around the dream and salvaged the destiny of a nation. Are we together? Dreams and visions are real. In fact, the salvation of we, the Gentiles, happened through a vision. Is that true? I hope you know before Acts chapter 10, no Gentile was saved. It was the Jews, right? It was in Acts chapter 10 when Peter was caught up in a trance. And then something came down from heaven. Imagine if Peter saw the trance and said, God forbid. No Cornelius house, no salvation of the Gentiles. All of us will be going to hellfire. We're spiritual Jews, but physically we're Gentiles, I assure you. It was a salvation that happened in Cornelius' house that spread to us. Dreams, visions. There are certain decisions I've taken over my life, over this ministry by the grace of God, that were on the strength of dreams and visions. God continues to show me visions today, directions communications of the spirit so it is one way to know the revealed will of God now let me tell you something very quickly about dreams and visions you don't have them at will you have to learn this because through witchcraft and Scientology you can be manipulated to start having and seeing things at will that is rubbish and jargon it is exclusively the ministry of the Holy Spirit communicating things to you according to the purposes of God, not according to your desire. 
So whether God reveals to me through a vision, a prophetic experience, a dream, it is I can ask him, right? And then pending on the gravity of the confirmation, he can use multiple spiritual channels. However, it is exclusively of the spirit. My calling to ministry, the peace and the joy, the conviction and all of that, but then visions, dreams, prophetic experiences have added to support my conviction. And today, millions of people are benefiting from that. The last dimension of the speakings of God over his revealed will is the prophetic. Now, I said prophetic experiences before. I mean, just any supernatural experience, but the prophetic. Let me say that and then we'll pray and tie it up. Have you been blessed? Listen carefully, please. The prophetic. Now, we just finished dealing on the subject of the body of Christ. And I told us, remember our teaching last week at Charity of Faith, that every provision about the will of God or every provision about the possibilities of God are embedded in the body. Is that true? Remember the teaching. It may not be at work in your life. It may not be a dimension open to you as a person, a unique member in the body. However, that possibility is where? In the body. Is that true? Now, there are people scattered all around that God has committed and he's still trusting with the gifts of prophecy and others being called into the prophetic and all kinds of prophetic and apostolic offices that are helping the body communicate what is supposed to be the will of God. So we see from the Bible, Agabus was one of the prophets who God used to speak to Paul. Is that true? Saul and, 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 and all of that and, and then to speak to him and all through scripture we see that God has used prophets to speak to people the prophetic is real and it can give direction the prophetic is real and can give direction the prophetic is a system and a ministry that God designed to help men access the mind of God and access the will of God there are times here by the grace of God that we have called people through the agency of the prophetic and communicated words for them. I have counseled people and communicated things to them. Um, by the grace of God, they have run with these things and their lives have changed. So the prophetic is very powerful in communicating the revealed will of God, the unique will of God. However, however, let me say this and then we'll tie it up for tonight. There is... Or there are two big limitations to the prophetic in themselves. Number one is that the accuracy of reception and interpretation, write it. The accuracy of reception and interpretation is subject to the man of God's personal word content. The accuracy, listen, of both reception of the vision or the word and its communication is largely subject to the man of God's degree or his word content. Now, please look up. This is very important. I was teaching in Enugu and, um, and, and, and I said this to them. I think it was during the minister's session. I told them that the danger with the prophetic is this. The manifestation of the gifts of the spirit, whether prophetic or any other manifestation, will never replace the place of getting the word of God seated in your heart. Are we together? Because I told you that one of the things we receive from the word of God is the character of God. Say the character of God and the operation of God. When you study the Bible, you know how God works. So with that knowledge of how God works, you will be able to interpret prophetic happenings in the light of the way God works. But most of the largely apostolic and prophetic voices that we've had, especially in recent times, are men and women who either transited from idol worship. Are we together? They also had their prophetic dimensions. And then they now stepped into the prophetic. And so there is that corruption because of the absence of the word of God. 
that inability to process spiritual things from the lens of the word of God is responsible for the error in both reception and communication. Remember, when Jesus spoke to the man and his eyes were opened, the Bible says he laid hands on him and he said, what do you see? The man did not see correctly. He said, he saw men like trees. So if you were to ask that man to prophesy, he would say, this tree, stand up. Was that a tree? It was what his eyes saw. Son of man, what seest thou? An almond tree. You have seen correctly. Meaning a man can see wrongly. That does not mean you are of the devil. But that it is your word content that accelerates your degree of reception, number one, and two, your interpretation. Do you know that if I do not understand the scripture, for instance, God can open my eyes right now and I can look at Shalhoma. Are we together? Let's assume, for instance, that there is witchcraft in her family. Now, I have not studied the Bible to understand the dimensions of the operations of demon spirit in the lives of people. Any vision I see like that, I will call it demon possession because that is what my understanding has given me. So when I see a spiritual thing wrong with her life, instead of separating it from her, I now look and say, Shahoma, stand up. You are possessed. Based on what I'm seeing, you are possessed. And I pray for her and she starts manifesting. And she will go back wondering what her prayer and fasting has done and she's now saying so i cannot understand i love god i am born again i'm filled with the holy spirit what is this one that i'm possessed again the name is not possession my inability to understand the word of god is what made me name it possession but the recipient now has received this as possession are you seeing the number one error with the prophetic so most apostles and prophets don't study the bible because they think they are open and inclined to perceptions in the realm of the spirit and they feel if, if i can see why should i read it let me tell you something every time you attempt to operate the prophetic without the word of god your chances of dappling into witchcraft and error is very high no matter who you are you don't have to be fake the word of god is what gives they are the guidelines for operating the prophetic so you operate the prophetic within the jurisdiction of the word of god are we together if i look at pastor alpha and his wife for instance and god reveals something to me about pastor alpha or his wife that is quite serious and i know is capable of destroying their marriage now watch this I am seeing a vision. Something, for instance, about Pastor Alpha and his wife. Are we together? But I also know that God is not the author of confusion. He will not come and destroy a family. That understanding will help me in the communication. I may tell the wife, please see me after service. And I discuss it personally. Are you seeing that now? My inability to understand that I can open my mouth and just say something and say it to the man and think I'm communicating prophetically and after service they march straight to the court and get a divorce courtesy the prophetic are you getting what I'm saying now there are many women that have been made to leave their husbands so said the prophet madam this your husband is, is irrecoverable the way he has already left the things of God into witchcraft and the solution is to leave the man or to tell the man the solution is to leave the woman. Including men of God. Including different kinds of people. The prophetic that compromises the character of the word is not accurate. Any prophetic communication that compromises the character of the word of God is not accurate. It should be re-edited and reconsidered. Both by the communicator and the recipient. Any dimension, even if it's from Joshua Selman, if it is not consistent with the character of the word of God. Why am I teaching you this? Look at me. You are going to go for meetings in your lifetime. 
you are going to meet great and mighty men, prophets of God. Are we together? And they are going to speak to you at one point or the other. They are not fake. They are not devils. But you must have an, a discernment. The moment you look at a prophet, you should have discernment to process the spiritual level. Separate the gift from his spiritual growth. That he's operating in the prophetic does not mean he's matured spiritually. It's a gift. Are we together? So chances are that he can speak to you and you know what part of the prophecy to receive and what part to throw into the dustbin. Otherwise, you will be in trouble. And then there are certain aspects of prophetic communications that are true, but they are coming to you so that you will change it. Not just sit down helplessly and make it happen. Are we together? Yesterday, I was, when we were, um, these guys did not even know, I'm sure they'll be surprised to hear it now. We're coming back and when we're going to the airport to come back, you know, someone called me and um, she was telling me that she had a dream and she saw a plane crash, you know, this and that, a plane crash. And, and truly, truly, this is somebody that I know that the, the word of the Lord, I know that she has a track record. Truly, truly, when she sees something or says something, it happens. And so she was afraid. She said, are you people going, you know, this and that and that? And I said, yes. And uh, I know what, imagine that I did not have the bank of the word of God. Till today I'll be in Enugu. Waiting for the day another word will come and say, now the road is clear. But now, what the person saw may not be wrong, but there is a more sure word of prophecy. Are we together now? So, that may be the plan of the devil for me to die yesterday in the air. Are we together? But I knew that if I enter, it will not crash. Now, that's another level of conviction. It's not about bragging. My strength is not on a, the written word of God that is more exalted above his name and any prophecy because we see in part and we prophesy in part. Are we together now? Yeah. A man of God once prophesied to a woman, a very accurate man of God, young man and all of that. I, I don't know which of the cities he's in and all of that. He prophesied to a woman and um, he told her she was going to have a baby girl. And the woman was trusting God for a baby boy. She had sown seeds and this. she went to God and she said, Lord, I, I respect and honor that prophet, but it's a baby boy. I tell you, there is a solid, bouncing baby boy came out. Look, let me tell you, the part of scripture you believe is the part that works for you. If someone tells me today you are going to die, it may be true. God opened his eyes to see demons plotting on how to die. <laughs> I'll, 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 go and, I'll go and die. But I'm not even going to pray about it. I'm going to go home quietly and sit down. Even if the devil drives my car, he will take me home. Are you getting what I'm saying? You must, you must have a settled... Now, don't brag for nothing. I know the burning bush I have seen that gives me the audacity to make that statement. I've seen death eyeball to eyeball. I know it. I know how it looks. It knows how I look. So it's not that I'm just talking for nothing. Honestly. Tomorrow we're off to Ibadan again. Who knows what the devil is planning this night? Maybe they are planning and say, okay, we lost our chance. Now is the next chance. They are free to plan. The Bible never stopped them from planning. The power of performance is where the sovereignty of God comes in. He says, surely they will gather. But because their gathering is not of the Lord, they will scatter. Otherwise, you will land into trouble. Someone will look at you and say, oh, you do not have a fallopian tube. Based on what God is revealing to me, Kai, there's no fallopian tube, no child. And you go back saying, talk. The way this scene is, I will just go and adopt a child and the man who married you is regretting and angry and wondering why. But the Bible says, and God opened the womb of Leah. It's none of your business where the child will grow. Whether it's your head, wherever, let the child grow and come out after nine months. It's none of your business where the child grows. 
history has recorded women who gave birth to twins with no womb. Twins, not even a child. Are we together? The will of God. Finally, there is a system that God built in the body to help us grow to a point of discernment where we can receive his revealed will. And that system is called praying in the spirit. Please write it down. There are not many systems to discernment. Praying in the spirit. I didn't know time had gone so much. Oh my gosh. Everybody say praying in the spirit. Say it again. Say praying in tongues. Now let me tell you something. Look up please. First Corinthians chapter 14. When you read verse 2, you read verse 4. It says... He that speaketh in an unknown tongue. Listen, please, believers. He says, edifieth himself. Edifieth himself. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue. Does what? Edifieth himself. The believer who does not pray in the spirit, I guarantee you, will have a hard time discerning the revealed will of God. You can check scripture and see it, but when it comes to your everyday decisions, as far as the advancement of your life is concerned, you will find out that you've not been able to build your spirit to rise beyond the level of the flesh. So the devil can manipulate your dreams. Are we together? Today, you will dream and see yourself in Abuja. Just when you, are, you want to find out the next day, you will see yourself in Ogun. The devil is playing with your mind. Because God is not an author of confusion. Are we together? Next tomorrow you see yourself in London. After seeing yourself four times, you give up using dreams and you sit down and you don't move forward again. Satan can manipulate dreams. But brothers and sisters, there is a level to which your spirit will rise. That no power of darkness will near anything that is a channel for spiritual communication in your life. There is no devil who will come to me in my dreams and manipulate me. No, 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 no. no. Even in my sleep, there is a garrison of the word of God. Praying in the spirit. Praying in the spirit. Praying in the spirit. When you cultivate the art of praying in the spirit, you are not only granting access for your petitions. You are not only challenging the powers that be. Listen, you are edifying yourself. And one of the ways to edify yourself is to build yourself to a point where you sustain the ability to discern. Many believers do not have discernment. Many believers do not have discernment. God will want to communicate certain realities to us, but our spirits are too dappled in the flesh. We cannot receive the promptings of the spirit. When his will is done, his kingdom comes. The will as written from scripture should be obeyed to the latter without any compromise. But that part of the will that has to be revealed is accessed largely through discernment. Discernment will also help you to dream correctly, not dream foolishly. You are trusting God for direction, a serious direction. You have a dream and you saw yourself drinking ice cream. How does that relate to what you are laboring and fasting for? Don't laugh. In the Bible, when men slept, God showed them dreams that were consistent with their desires. But right now, dreams have been devalued because we are communicating carnally. The devil is a liar in the name of Jesus. Rise up on your feet. We are going to pray. Shabrando Three quick prayer points very quickly. Three quick prayer points. Make sure you pray them with all your heart. Prayer point number one. Lord, grant me grace to be obedient to your will as revealed in scripture. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. There are dimensions of his will that has been revealed in scripture. You don't have to ask God all you need is the grace. All you need is the grace to walk in it.
Are you praying, Koinonia? Inside and outside, pray. Grant me grace. Grant me grace. Grant me grace. It is your will for me to prosper. It's already revealed in scripture. Grant me grace to live by the principles. It is your will for me to succeed in my exams. It's revealed in scripture. Grant me grace. Grant me grace. It is your will for me to rise and be world class. May I never doubt your written will for me. Let the consciousness of what you have written in the Bible Give me confidence. It is your will for me to be healed. I receive grace to never accommodate sickness in my life. It is your will for me to give birth. Grant me grace to never accommodate barrenness in my life. please pray pray you are building yourself if you must fulfill destiny it will only be according to the will of God and the first dimension of his will is his written will access from scripture hallelujah 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 listen Never ask God if it's his will over something that has been clearly stated in the Bible. Don't ever ask God if it's his will to heal you. Don't ever ask God if it's his will for you to live long. Are we together? Don't ever ask God if it's his will for you to prosper. Don't ever ask God if it's his will for your business to expand. It's his written will. Second prayer point. You're going to pray and say, Lord, every direction I need that I have not directly found in scripture, I pray that you reveal it to me. Please pray. Every direction I need for the next level of my life, for the next level of marriage, relationship, for the next level of business, for the next level of ministry, reveal it to me. It is within your power. Lord, use the instrument of peace and joy. Use the instrument of peace and joy. Use the instrument of dreams, visions, prophetic encounters. Lord, even use the prophetic ministry. Speak to me. Let my confusion of decades melt away with one assured direction from you. Let my confusion of decades melt away. Let my confusion of decades melt away. Let my confusion of months, let my confusion of years melt away. Where to go? What job to do? What business to take? Who to marry? How many children to have? Lord, I believe you. Your revealed will. I'm at a sensitive period in my life. I cannot make mistakes. Pray. I need a clear direction. I cannot afford to make mistakes over my academics. I cannot afford to make mistakes over my marital destiny. I cannot afford to make mistakes over the business that I should be engaged in. I should not be at a loss because of lack of knowledge of your will over the geography the geography my location reveal your will to me oh god reveal your will to me oh god hallelujah hallelujah let me tell you many of you will return with testimonies from this teaching because so many of us right now do you know listen let me tell you do you know why many Christians don't move forward because they have been brought to the awareness 
that taking a step outside of the will of God will cost you. So most Christians are marking time because they want to make sure they are sure of their decisions, which is why you must pray. Because it is the devil's plan to manipulate the revealed will of God so that when you don't hear it, you don't move forward. Are we together? I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, build my spirit man to a point where I receive your will without error and without manipulation. Lift your voice and pray. Build my spirit man. 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 Kabarato soto kapashabaradabaladaba. Build my spirit man in the name of the Lord Jesus. Build my spirit man so that I can discern your will. I can discern your will. Build my spirit man. No manipulation of my dreams. Build my spirit man. No manipulation of my visions. Build my spirit man. No manipulation of the prophetic experiences that come to me. My God and my King. Give me sound experiences that will convince me of your will beyond the shadow of a doubt. Hallelujah. You see, listen. Listen. It is not what you do that makes you succeed. It is how you do it. It's not doing certain things people succeed I want to pray for you I have learned in my little life that the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference yes. praise the Lord I stretch my hands upon all of you right now as I speak may the grace that lifts men come upon every one of you as I speak right now. Receive it right now. The grace that lifts people. There is an anointing that lifts a man. It's not trial and error. Let it come upon you right now. Open up the gates of cities, the gates of territories, and I speak in the name of Jesus. A level of grace. May your saxophone stop being an instrument. May it become a weapon from today. A weapon of healing. You and your entire team. Let it burn like fire in your spirit. Like fire upon your spirit. Never to be the same. You will sing with the sounds of the heavens. And everybody that hears that sound will know that your communications are of the spirit. There is a grace that lifts men. You can try. You can struggle. You can beg. You can connect no. see every time listen every time you see consistent results regardless of the situation there is an anointing please lend this there is an anointing there is an anointing that translates men swallows up the weaknesses of people. May that be your testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. God will give you wisdom. Let your ministry enter another dimension. I pray for character for all of you. See, this is usually the problem. Listen. Let me, I'm, I'm teaching, you are learning. The most important aspect of the anointing is the character to maintain it not the anointing because you see the anointing is very charismatic the most powerful 
ability of a man of God is self-control. The ability to keep quiet even when you have what to say. The ability to walk within the jurisdiction of the grace apportioned. There are many of we people, we don't have self-control. Especially over an opportunity like this. Everybody now wants to show and you do not know where God has stopped and you want to continue to stretch it to show you are anointed and then you step out of the spirit and begin to walk in the flesh. Because some of you are here for this same anointing. But you see, the, it's not just the anointing. Believe me, this is not an issue of prayer and fasting. It's an issue of knowing God and understanding his ways. God is only committed to backing what he instructed. If he did not direct you, he will not back you. Hallelujah. God bless you. John chapter 3 verse 16. Let's just look at the scripture quickly and then we'll pray. There is a lot that God wants to do tonight. These guys have already stared the anointing. And you see, the thing with the anointing is once it's stared, it doesn't stop. It doesn't know whether it's miracle service or Easter. John chapter 3 verse 16. I'd like you all to be sensitive. The anointing has been stared up in this place. Many of you do not know what the staring of the anointing is. The moment your eyes see, there is a relationship between your heart and your eyes. So once your eye sees it, immediately your spirit is open. And the moment your spirit is open, the spirit of God starts moving. He doesn't care whether you are preached or not. Because that's his desire. Hallelujah. And usually, once the anointing starts moving, it's very difficult to contain it. Because the hearts of people are open. hearing the sound of thunder. I know this is not physical. I'm hearing a sound of thunder. Like lightning is coming upon people right now in the congregation. Why do I see this? It's like the sound of thunder. It's what I hear in my spirit. Hallelujah. Please pay attention. The meeting is on. I'm seeing ministering spirits. It's a class of angels. I'm seeing them walk inside and outside. Just let me do what is happening. Ministering spirits. There are not many times I see these kinds of angels. I'm seeing them walking inside and outside. Ministering spirits. They are angels that impart strange levels of graces. Ah, ah, yeah. Say na na de na na de na na de na na de na na. Shakata prada gada bala da bakata prada. Kata 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 bala da baka. They will touch you where you are. It will be like fire. They will touch you where you are. As they touch you, they release your miracles. As they touch you, they release your breakthroughs. As they touch you, 
They break those chains. Nah. They are touching you on behalf of families. Touching you on behalf of families. Direction. That's what I hear. God is giving men direction. It's like an anointing. It will come on you, outside and inside. Direction, an end to that confusion. Right now, it's coming like light. But then you will hear him direct you. Direction. 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 What is that area of confusion? His light shines upon it right now. For marriage, direction. Direction, direction, direction for where to settle down, geographic location, direction is coming by the Holy Ghost, direction. Somebody is praying and say, Lord, show me. The Lord is saying, I am showing you. It's coming upon your spirit. I'm giving you direction on what to do. Direction. Hallelujah. I'm seeing the names of people written on a paper and put under a stone. And the Lord is saying, take it out. Lord, where are those people whose destinies have been buried? As I'm speaking right now, inside and outside. Right now, right now. As I speak, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Right now, where you are sitting, you will receive a visitation. I pull it out. This is a miracle service. I pull it out now. Oh yes, release that lady. I see it in the spirit. Release that lady right now. Release that lady's destiny. to receive it by faith like the dew of heaven resting in this place inside and outside Lord we receive what you are doing
Just sit down if you can. Those under the anointing, just leave them. John 3, 16. want to the Lord has just healed a lady of a breast lump you have a lump in your left breast check it right now check it right now check it and come out right now right now I don't know why God is just interrupting please check it check it check it right now in fact I see three people check it this is a family please we are not playing games inside and outside i'm seeing three ladies who came with like a lump on their breast check it right now that devil has gone back to hell please check it quickly and come out if they are under the anointing when they when they are all right let them come out very quickly let them come out quickly augustina augustina i'm hearing a name like augustina Augustina if there's someone like that you can just make your way to the front quickly Augustina the Lord is judging evil in your family this is oppression this is what I'm seeing oppression as it's happening to you there's somebody outside this same anointing is touching the person outside. The second overflow, the anointing of the Spirit is touching somebody outside. The Lord is bringing judgment to wickedness because I'm seeing that this is something that has to do with witchcraft. It has tied your life and your family down and the Lord is telling me, release Augustina. Release Augustina. Release Augustina. Release Augustina. And as it's happening to you, it's also happening to that other lady. In the name of Jesus, I release you right now from every chain that has held you. Be released. Your family be released. It's time for you to testify. I release both of you prophetically in the name of Jesus Christ every door the devil has tied let it be opened by the anointing of the spirit in the name of the lord jesus christ hallelujah hallelujah i'm seeing a whole family that came there is a family god wants me to minister to you are five five people i don't know if there is a mother. I'm seeing a family with five people who came from somewhere and the Lord wants me to minister to them. You are five in all. You are five in all. Please, when you identify them, they can come up so that we will just minister to them very quickly. Hallelujah. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. And the Bible says that he proved that love by giving his only begotten son. Please listen. Don't worry about what is happening. Just let me have your attention please. He says he gave his only begotten son. This, we can take it from there. That, that statement he gave his only begotten son is the summation of the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ. Are we together now? Please help her, wrap her. I command that spirit to leave her right now. 
now. And never return. In the name of Jesus. Release her family. Release. I see a lot of money being tied. Release it now as you go. In the name of Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. So the Bible says, He gave His only begotten Son. Hallelujah. For God so loved the world. The word there is cosmos. The social system that has to do with people. Listen please. And has to do with the entire territory. The social system. He says for God so loved the world. And he proved that love. Listen, listen. Because love must be manifested to be appreciated. Are we together now? And the Bible says that he gave his only begotten son and please don't be confused there is a name that son is called Jesus because there are many people who can preach to be the begotten of the father but the only begotten son who after his resurrection now became the first begotten right until the resurrection of man he was the only begotten please listen you see everything about this Bible was pointing to this very revelation. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Everything. The book of Revelation says the revelation of Jesus Christ. Not the revelation of a formula or a principle. So the law, the prophets, Abraham, Samson, Isaac, Judges, everything was tracing to the genealogy of Jesus Christ. And then the Bible says that he manifested himself before people and he was full of grace and truth. Listen, Jesus came with a message and his message was very simple. He said, repent. The word repent is not the word turn from your sins. No, preachers preach that as a result of lack of understanding. The word repent is an indication of completely turning from a direction to another. Please just be patient with me, this family or minister. Are we together now? Turning from one direction to the other. But the first step to that turning is acknowledging a person, his sacrifice and his government. That's the first step. And then you begin to walk in a Accordance to his principles. Only when you do that are you said to have repented. Many people have not repented. They want to repent. They think they have repented. They hope they are repenting. The first message that was preached after the resurrection of Christ is that, men and brethren, what shall we do? And this is what the apostle said repent for the remission of your sins. So the Bible says he gave his only begotten son. You laid aside your majesty, gave up everything for me, suffered at the hands of those you have created. You took all of my guilt and when you died and rose again. Now today in heaven, if you know it, just sing it with me. I really want to worship you, my Lord. You have won my heart, and I am yours forever and ever. I
for someone to use and withdraw money. He gave, he donated. And Jesus came upon the earth and he began to do many great things. Listen, Jesus did not just come. Please, I want you to pay attention. It's going to be very brief and we'll begin to pray. Jesus did not just come to show us how God looked alone. He came to show us how we should look. So when he walked upon the earth, he was the prototype of God's idea of the man he had created. He was invincible, the Bible records. Above situations, above circumstance, with unlimited power, yet a man of extreme self-control. He knew when to speak and he knew when to keep quiet. There would be so many sick people, like the ten lepers. He would heal one and just walk away. Because his desire was not to show power. His desire was to do the will of the Father. He was more interested in bringing satisfaction to his Father than building a ministry. People tried to say, look, build a ministry. And he said, no, 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 no. I can of my own do nothing as I see my Father. So he came to show us the prototype of the true Christian life. A life that is completely yielded to the will of the Father. Void of self-ambition. Void of a desire for vain glory and personal gratification outside of Christ. A life that is crucified with Christ. Are we together now? And then the Bible begins to describe to us that which happened today many years ago. We know it as the passion of the Christ. It started from the communion where they came into him by covenant so that they would authorize him. John chapter 6 says, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you cannot be part of me. You cannot have my life. So while they were taking the communion, they were giving him access to the sin of man upon himself. And then the Bible says he went to Gethsemane and there he cried. He prayed until tears were like drops of blood. Afterwards, he was ready to be crucified. And brothers and sisters, I know that we celebrate Easter. Today is Good Friday. Pain is what made today good. Are we together? Sacrifice is what made today good. If he refused to lay down his life. Listen, when Pilate looked at him and said, don't you know I have the power to free? He said, ah, 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 ah. He said no man has this power except it is given unto him by my father. He said, I have the power to lay it down and the power to pick it up again. In other words, I was not coerced. My love for you made me to sacrifice my life, my reputation, we talk a lot about Good Friday, but we never know what made it good. This is what made it good. That a man gave his son, then the son gave his life. Are we together now? It's one thing to give your child. It's another thing for the child to agree. He can refuse. Jesus had the right to refuse. In fact, he was tempted to negotiate it. He said, Father, if it be possible, you are the all-wise God. There is another way you can do this thing. But then he remembered, nevertheless. I told you the hallmark of sonship is servanthood. The true proof that you are a son is that you can give up sonship to become a servant. Are we together now? The father gave Jesus. Jesus gave his life. And don't be confused. He gave his blood he gave his righteousness. Are we together now? He gave up his position. And when he was doing that, he had you in mind. Listen, listen. He never went to the cross because of anything he did of himself. The Bible says he was a man touched with the feelings of our infirmity, yet without sin. But he took your place because the Bible says we all like sheep gone astray, right? 
He said, every man has gone his own way. With our ideas about God, our ideas about success. Would you give our mother a chair, please? Let her just sit down. I'll minister to you in a moment. Please. At least let her just sit down. Hallelujah. Well, all of you, you can sit down. I'll call you now. They are all looking at me. Um, sit down. Especially this, my friend. Friend, how are you? What's his name? Aaron. Kelvin. Just get somewhere close. They can sit around. You can come. I'll attend to you now. Just five minutes. Let me establish what you need. Hallelujah. So, please come, sir. I offend a government and they are about to destroy me. Listen, please. About to destroy me. And the Bible testifies that I have no power in myself. And then someone comes. And while I'm on my way to destruction, he interrupts. And he says, I love you too much to let you keep gambling and trying your way. This is what I want you to do. Stand back and watch me pay the price. And while he was on the way, while they were flogging him, in his mind he was saying, mankind, I hope you are watching. This would have been you. I hope you are watching. I hope you are watching the scars. As he began to bleed, he said, I hope you are watching. See, if two people come and they tell you they love you, the best answer to give those two people is I'm watching. Because love is a verb. Are we together now? I am what? All kinds of things have told you they love you. But they left you. But Jesus said, watch my love. I'm not going to make noise about it. First turn back. And while they flogged him, he said, if it's for you, I will still go the extra mile. And they flogged him. The father gave him. He gave his health. The father gave him. He gave his prosperity. The father gave him. When we say his life. Let's break it down. What, what is in his life that he gave? Because that's what he gave you. What was in the life of Jesus? The ability to reign and rise above sickness and diseases. The father gave him. He gave it away in exchange. The Bible says he was rich, but he gave it. Are we together now? He had a reputation of dominion, but he laid it aside. I hope you know that they stripped him naked. The covering you see around is just for social reasons when you're watching movies. A 33-year-old man, naked. Children watched him. Adults watched him. People mocked at him. He said, you claim to be a king. And he said, this is all for you. Are we together? Blood dripping out from every part of his body. Every time he was tempted to give up. He said, no, if I give up, where I stop is where you must continue. And I know that even if it was for the last nail, you still would not be able to take it. See, listen. If you think what happened on the cross is what Jesus just died for, physically, you will be deceived because there are human beings who have been crucified. What he stopped you from was not the physical activity. It was what was happening in the spirit. You can do the physical one. I guarantee you, people have been crucified. But you don't know what that meant in the spirit. A lot was interplaying in the spirit while that was happening. He became Adam from Gethsemane. From Gethsemane to the cross, he was no longer the Christ. He was Jesus, Adam, the very man of sin. Mortality came upon him. Please listen. And the father kept watching. He had given him and he knew that it is more blessed to give than to receive. So there was no negotiation about receiving. The blessing was that he would bring many sons into glory. Are we together now? When they took him to that cross and they nailed him, as his blood began to drip upon the earth, and in that excruciating pain, it was a way of torturing criminals. 
he was not just looking at Mary and John. He was looking at you. He was looking at me. He was looking at every witchcraft in our family and every ordinance of darkness. And he said, if it's for you, I will do it. But he made a very interesting statement we are going to establish tonight. Three words that represented victory. It is finished. Oh, hallelujah. I didn't study English. But I know that when a man said, it is finished. It is finished. Is a reality that is present and continuous forever. Not it was finished. You would have said the condition for it finishing has changed. So we have to start another one. It is finished. The question is, what is the it that has been finished? First, that inability to access the Father. We call it lack of righteousness. He said that error is finished. That, 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 that Christianity that has to do with ceremonial cleansings, having to atone for your sins by your own strength, have brought it to an end. That ability of saying qualify and come to God, he said it is finished. You now will come through my own invitation, my own access. Like I organize a program and I invite someone and while you are about to drive him, I say, no, 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 that's my guest. Come. But you are not only his guest, he also made you the one to be celebrated. Please listen. There is a dimension of this we have not learned and this is what I want to teach us. When Jesus went to hell and met Satan, a discussion transpired. And Satan said, remember Adam. And he said, I don't remember Adam. I am he. Don't you see? This is Adam. And Satan knew it was true. Because only Adam had the right to collect the key. No other man could collect the key. And so he went as the second Adam. And said, you killed Adam. And every man that came from him, let me have the keys. Revelations 1 verse 1, when you read that word, I am he that was dead, but now I am alive and I hold the keys. He collected the keys. Listen. Access to the earth, access to dominion, access to God's life. That's the most important part, the life of God. I'm going to explain it. When he resurrected, watch this. Did you know that if he just started walking and doing all of the things he did, man would not be able to partake of it because he had not ascended to heaven. It would just be that he was victorious. And then the Bible says, according to the book of Hebrews, that he went to heaven as the high priest, the lamb, the sacrifice, as everything. And then he took his blood, poured it upon that tabernacle, and said, Father, you are just for seeing that man does not have access to divine help and all of this because you are a just God. Your throne is founded upon righteousness and justice. The Bible says they are the foundations, meaning there's no negotiation that will bend it. But now he says, every time you think justice, let mercy begin to speak. Watch this. I really want you to get a revelation of this. It will change your life. Every time the voice of judgment, the voice of mess, of, of justice begins to speak, I will not fight it. But remember that I not only paid the price, I paid the price for everybody who will be an offender on this path. Are we together now? When that happened, a coronation happened in heaven. We see that coronation. The psalmist gave us a revelation. And from Philippians chapter 2, the Bible says a name, an office, an identity was given to him in heaven. To sit upon that throne. Are we together now? And the Bible says anything that has to do with man's redemption, man's vindication must pass through him. Meaning 
A man is only condemned when he condemns that man. A man is only justified when he justified. The father put it in his office. Are we together? Watch what he did. When he sat down on that throne, he told man, there is another dimension you do not know. I know that I paid the price for you, but I want to teach you another dimension. We paid it in covenant. Listen. You did not participate in anything. But out of my love, I took you and made it as though in me, you were the one who paid that price. So not only did he die for you, you died in him. Are we together now? So in Christ, every man's iniquity, every man's um, basis for accusation was nailed in Christ. Paul saw this in Galatians 2.20 and he said, I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, he said, I live. Yet not I, but Christ. It's an exchange. He died for me. Now I live in him. In other words, the day Jesus Christ dies, there is no reason why I should be alive because we are in him. So my life is no longer something I get outside of him. My life is an overflow of what I have received from him. And he's so designed that from that point, hence, listen, everything I derive will be because of him, in him and with him. My joy is because of him. My prosperity is because of him. Please listen. My peace is because of him. So at no point in this kingdom would I be found leaning on my own strength. Because the moment I lean on my own strength, the judgment of the Lord catches up with me. The only basis for vindication is to be in him. This is what he said. He says, he that abides in me and I abide he said, the same will bear much fruit. He said, for without me, the word without means outside of me and everything that I have done, ye can do nothing. The basis of the believer's victory is what Christ did on the cross, but not just what Christ did on the cross, because that's what a lot of people say. Oh, I know what he did. No, let's continue. John 3 verse 16. Please give it to us so that we can. It's not enough to know what Jesus did. That's not where I'm going tonight. This is the part that concerns you. That whosoever believes. Believes what? No, no, no. It didn't say that whosoever believes anything. There is a specific thing you have to believe to have life. You can believe Jesus is a prophet. It never gives life. You can believe Jesus is a healer. It doesn't give life. Are we together? He says, believe in him. Who is the him? Who is the him? No. You see, you see where we miss it? We have been believing in rubbish. Who is the him? Who? He said, God, no. Believing in God doesn't give you life. That's where I want us to get to tonight. You, you see that our confusion is the reason why we cannot manifest the reality of God's life. We believe, but what do you believe? Are we together? You can believe the shepherd. Believe me, you will not be saved. Believing in the shepherd does not bring salvation. Are we together? Believe in him. Who is him? The Bible, I love the way the Bible puts it. As many as believed in him. See that? 
Brothers and sisters, I am many things. And all of those dimensions can give you different operations of me. Are we together? A child believes a father. A worker believes a CEO. A Jimmy's daughter believes in her father. She doesn't believe in a CEO. We believe in a Jimmy Adekbe. The multi-millionaire. That's what you believe. You will never get fatherly love from that dimension. Are we together now? You may get financial advice. You may get intelligence. You may get all of this. I believe in Professor Femi. You will get the intellectual dimension. There is a dimension of God you must believe to have life. Many of us have believed him as a healer. You can be healed and still go to hell. Please hear me. Many of us have believed him as a savior. You can have, I mean, you can have, a, um, what do we call it, uh, as a shepherd. What dimension of him have you believed? I will tell you now. Ready? There is a dimension of him you must believe to be saved. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What is Lord? The word Lord means a conqueror. Are we together now? Listen, please. It's not just a savior like the one who died. He didn't resurrect as a savior. He died as a savior. He did not resurrect as a savior. He resurrected as Lord, a winner, a champion. One qualified to transfer what he has. And the Bible says, whoever believed that. Listen. Whoever believes in him, that name that was given, he said, he shall not perish. The word perish there is not the word go to hell. Are we together? Because the Bible says, whoever does not believe is already condemned. Shall not perish. Here it is. But have money. But have. The word everlasting is a wrong interpretation. Everybody has everlasting life. Everlasting life is life that does not end. Your, your life does not end. You only change location to continue the living. That's why we never say, will you spend eternity? You must spend it. The question is where? Are we together now? <laughs> Don't mind this, my funny friend. Where will you spend eternity? Not will you spend. You must spend it. The word eternal life here is the word divine life. It's the Greek word zoe. I know you've heard it. Many of us quote it, but just listen. The word zoe, listen. Let me describe it for you. It's a life that does not want depend on any external input for its sustenance. It's a life that has the capacity to reproduce anything it needs within itself. Are we together now? Like you do not have to source for anything. Within that system is self-sufficiency. Within that system is the ability to be any and everything. That life can become health. That life can become victory. That life can become wisdom. So when the Bible says we have life, it doesn't mean we just have a new way of breathing in and out. No, something came upon you that all of a sudden translates you. Please, I want you to believe this. The Bible says the focus in the whole story is the believing part. Whoever believes in him, the Lord, who was a savior, became a conqueror, now sits as a king. The father gave the son. The son gave his life. Your job is to receive that life. When you receive that life in reality, the Bible says certain things will begin to change. You see, the life is a programming. The moment it enters you, it deconstructs itself to different dimensions. Please listen. The life of God is not just a vague thing that comes upon. No, 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 no. It is the life that begins to open you up to the mysteries of the kingdom. It is the life you have received that begins to immune you 
from the activities of darkness. Many people have not received this light. They want healing, but they have rejected the light of God. Many people have come out for altar call. Father, I, I, I'm, I'm born again. I believe in you, this and that, but they have not received. He said, as many as receive. Brothers and sisters, you can reject it. Many seated here have rejected it. I give you my ATM card. You refuse to collect it. You can reject it. Yet you need what only my ATM card will give you. You can borrow money from Pastor Lawrence, borrow money from uh, Promise and so on and so forth. And I say, take my ATM card. The point is, you don't just take it and hold it. When you take the card, something will make you turn behind and begin to read and follow. You see, the life of God is not, how do I put it now? It's not like something you just put in your pocket. All right, look at it. I have this handkerchief. So we say, I have the life of God. Do you have it? Yes, no. That's not the idea of the life of God. The idea of the life of God is like a programming. Something enters you and begins to work in you. It is God who is at work in us to will and to do. So it's working. The moment the life enters you, it's like a genetic mutation. It starts altering your configuration. Are we together now? And the Holy Spirit is the custodian of that life. When he comes, he begins to open you up to the realities of his word. All of a sudden, listen, because of that life, you are now spiritually alive. You can have the sensitivity to know that life was not supposed to be like this. Why am I always failing? You will never just know that ordinarily. It takes that life to open that awareness in you. Are we together now? It's like glasses. You all of a sudden start seeing life from another perspective. No, I'm not supposed to fail like this. I can't, I can't just be taking it like that again. Something must change. No, I've seen a trend in my family. People don't get married till they are 45. I'm noticing that something in my external environment is fighting the reality of that life. And the Bible says, he who has the son has eternal life. So way, God's kind of life. Now watch this. Although you have that life, it takes the ministry of the Holy Spirit, please listen, to open you up to the operation of that life so that you can receive the fullness of the benefits of that life. This is where a lot of people miss it. Oh, I have life. I have life. The same way you say, I have a car. The same way you say, I have an ATM card. Can you use it? I have given it to you. Do you know how to activate the operation of that life? Do you know how to make that life work in you. We have been taught that it works automatically. No, sir. No, sir. You can claim to have the life and still die of sickness. Now, this is where Satan's ministry comes. The thief cometh not, but to steal, to kill. If you don't have anything, he doesn't come to steal. Are we together now? Satan comes. His first ministry is deception. What is deception? painting an untrue picture and convincing you to believe it. So you believe that I do not have this life. If I truly had this life, I should not be sick. Are we together now? If I have this life, I should be doing exploits academically. If I have this life, now listen, here is where the confusion has come in the body of Christ. There are those who are saying you have this life. There are those who are saying you don't have this life. You better fight your way into receiving it. Both of them are incomplete. On one side, you are seeing the supposed by faith. You believe, you know, you acknowledge that that life is in you. But then you are not seeing the difference the Bible said should be produced. Are we together now? This is the dilemma of many Christians. I gave my life to Christ from the day I got born again. My life has not changed. It's been 10 years. I will tell you why. Eternal life is being frustrated within you. Because you have not been taught how to release and activate the operation of the content of that life. It's like buying a phone. 
you admire it, you look at it, but you do not know how to walk with it. That was the lamentation of the psalmist in Psalm 82 from verse 5. He says, they know not, not they have not, they know not, neither will they understand. He said, they grope in darkness and so the foundations of the earth are out of course. The next verse says, have I not said, ye are God and all of you are children of the most high. He says, but you shall what? Die like mere men. Listen, please listen. An heir, as long as he is a child, does what? The Bible starts by calling him what? An heir, a partaker of an inheritance, a partaker of a reality. But it says, as long as he's a child, the word child here is devoid of strategy, devoid of the ability to understand the operation of that process. He said, he differed not from a slave. I can receive the life of God that contains health, vitality, prosperity, and still be under a cause. I tell you, hear me, brothers and sisters. Because we misunderstand the prophetic dimension of God's word. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. But we do not know that the communications of God are twofold. There is the prophetic communication of God, speakings according to his realm of existence. But there is the experiential manifestation of that prophetic word. It is the nature of God to call things as though they already appear. Are we together now? Hebrews chapter 2, he put it very beautifully. He said God had put all things under the subjection of man. He said God did not leave anything left, but he said as it is now, we do not yet see all things. Are we together now? So, you have come to answer the altar call. The life is in you, but you went back and the exact same thing you know happens when a man is under a curse is happening to you. Now you went to a pastor and said, Pastor, you said if I'm born again, this thing would leave. But you, the person said, yes, is it not in your Bible? We're all ready together. Now you are born again, brothers and sisters. But the truth is, if you will be sincere, you are still seeing those traces as if nothing happened to you. So it puts believers in a dilemma. There are those who are saying, keep believing that it's gone. One day it will go. Hey. Wonder shall never end. If you have that kind of ideology, you are in for trouble. And then on the other hand, there are those who act as though they really have nothing. So they are trying. They live per day. We survive today. Let's see how the war of tomorrow will be. I know that there will be all kinds of things. Are we together now? So although they read that there is victory in Christ. The truth is they don't believe it. They just know let's fight per day. They are the ones who suspect everybody and everything. If Sam looks at you like this is a sign that is an enemy. So they live their life with the consciousness of an aberrated perspective of warfare. And by warfare, they mean a consistent, never-ending contention. Both. Are we together? This is prophecy. But there is a place for the manifestation of prophecy. Jesus Christ has done everything he needs to do. But I have a role to play. Nobody gets saved just because Jesus died. You will go to hell. There is a response. Please listen. The idea of grace does not mean not participating. The idea of not participating in a process to call it grace is an aberration. Are we together? Uh -huh. The difference between grace and the law is what kind of participation. There is a participation that is unto the flesh. There is a participation that is a response of faith. That is the participation that brings results. Are we together now? So if the Bible says, by tithing, you open your heavens. When I'm tithing, I'm not acting under the law. 
I'm not trying to do something. I am responding. There is a difference between doing something to gain righteousness. But in any case, there must be reception by faith. And that in itself is a participation. This looks very simple, but it's at the foundation of the lack of results and the miracles that many people are are not receiving. I don't want us to waste this night and just get up and see people fall under the anointing and celebrate miracles and go back. I want you to live victorious. If all you think is healing, you will be frustrated. If all you think is on my in God's life and all its content is away, the life of God that can become any and everything, any and everything. Christ has been made unto me through his life wisdom. He's been made unto me strength. He's been made unto me prosperity. That life is the word. And as the word opens up, it shows me the dimensions of its operation. And then I look out first to believe. Number two, to respond. Everybody say believe. Say respond. This is your part as a believer. You, when you respond to what you do not believe, is a waste of time. So the Bible says, whoever believes in him, you receive. But that life begins to teach you certain things. And you respond to those teachings. Please listen to me. Part of what that life teaches you is that Satan is a trickster, he's a deceptive person, and he will not, just because you have life, leave you. The Bible says he left Jesus for a season. The next time he would come, he didn't come directly again. He came through Peter, and Jesus said, I still detect you. And the devil says, do not, I mean, God said, do not be unaware, speaking through the apostle, of the devil's strategy. Are we listening to me, please? Because many people get up bragging. I'm not under any curse. I'm not under this. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the Lord. That's not a lie. But you have not learned how to participate in response to make that an experiential reality. So you will still brag around and die like men. Are we together now? Christ and I really believe in his word but I also believe in the principles that the revelation of his life releases and my obsession is to always find out where is my part in this brothers and sisters there is a part there is a part that you have to play believing is not enough believing talks of conviction persuasion about the truth of a person or a statement, but there must be a response. Your response is your action of faith. So the Bible says this in the book of Hebrews, there remaineth a rest, a Sabbath for the people of God. In spite of what Christ has done, there still remains a rest. And then it says, let us therefore labor. This is Paul in the New Testament. What is the idea of labor? push God aside. No. Let us find out our place of response. Let us therefore understand the operations of the kingdom so that we will know where our place of alignment is. And he says, whoever labors like that, there is a guarantee he will enter his rest. There is a way you will align that sickness will run away from your body. Believe me. It's not just by claiming. Um, you will claim and be shocked. There is a way you respond. Remember during our time of fasting, we're showing you different mysteries. These are all the components that are called the life of God. Right? He gave you But it takes faith and it takes an operation of the spirit. So Satan 
has kept many people bound for two main reasons. One, they have rejected the light. And the solution to that is an altar call. I'm going to do that shortly before we start ministry. The second is he has kept people in delusion and ignorance. Never trivialize the role of deception in a man's destruction. Deception. The first deception is that you don't need to do anything again. Oh, brothers and sisters, hear me. I fear God. It's a big deception. As free as salvation claims to be, if you do not respond, you are going to hell. There is always a participation. That's what we call koinonia. Everybody say participation. If you will ever enjoy the healing dimension of God's life, there is a participation. If there will ever be prosperity, there is a participation. Now, the participation is a response of faith. God credits it as a response of faith, not an addition to what he has done. It's a compliment. So, you would see a sick body and say, your faith, you believe I am able to heal you. You were convinced based on the report you had. And now, I gave you an instruction, waiting for your participation. You got up, your faith, he calls it your faith. So, what is your faith? Faith is the name given to the action you take based on your conviction of God's word. Believing is not faith. No, 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 no. Believing is the first step to faith. You can believe without having faith. A believer is not a possessor. A believer who responds is a possessor. There are so many people, listen to me, who are trusting God for all kinds of things here. I'm teaching you how to get results tonight. God is not a herbalist. There is a participation. Ejimi, this is a gift for you. What is he supposed to do? Watch his response. Now, he's standing up. It's a sign that he believes me. I can choose to hide it. Please sit down, sir. Sorry I'm using you. Hope, I'm sorry. I'm just doing this game with your husband. Hallelujah. Hey, Jimmy, do you believe I'm having a phone? And that phone is for you. If you believe it, walk up to me. Faith. This is faith. The walking to me, although he has not seen it. So he's putting my integrity to the line. It's up to me to prove that I'm not lying. So I bring it out. If he comes to me, listen. If he comes to me and I say, ah, I'm playing, he believed I'm the one who is a liar. And the Bible said, God looked for anybody who is greater than him so that he will show you he's not playing games. Are we together now? Let's look at one scripture. Thank you, sir. Romans chapter 8, please. Romans chapter 8. Let's look at verse 35. Romans 8, 35. Just that one scripture. And then we'll take an altar call and begin to minister. Romans chapter 8. 35. Okay, give us from verse uh, 32. 32. Thank you. Everyone, please read. If you are a Christian, if you are a child of God, this is Good Friday. Well, even if you are not a child of God, read. I will soon make an altar call. One, two, read. He that spared not Stop. Who is the he now? God. He's trying to make a statement and he's tying the certainty of that statement to something he had done before. It's like saying, he that built this bridge in Kaduna and built it excellently is about to build something. So in case you doubt what I'm about to do, find out whether I did that thing or not. He's about to make a statement and he's saying, don't you dare doubt me for what I'm about to say. He that did not spare his what? Own son, but delivered him up. For who? What's the next statement? How shall he not with him also freely give us what? This is God speaking. He said, look at me. Your healing is a lesser thing. I gave Jesus. What is healing? 
I gave Jesus what is witchcraft. If I did not, if I spared my son, then you will know that there are some things I can spare. But I carried my son. I gave him. And now I have gathered you to give you healing. And you are asking God, this my, this have been bleeding for six months non-stop. And God said, if I spared not Jesus, I will not spare anything. Whatever it will take me to prove myself, I will do it. If it means me killing somebody, I will do it. I, I gave my son, who will I not be able to kill? Listen, this is the basis for conviction. So every time the devil is trying to say, look, 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 look. Will that prophecy work? Just remember Jesus. Jesus begged the father to have mercy. The father refused. So listen, Jesus said, father, reconsider. The father said, you are joking. Stay there. And now God is saying, I want to bless you. And the devil is saying, no. And Jesus is saying, God is saying, just believe me. And watch how I will do anything it takes. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. father did not give Jesus it's like a man listen it's like a man who vowed to punish every offender and he saw his wife and the guy said I'm a just person and he punished his wife then somebody scrolls along and says oh guy you know we are Nigerians what do you think he's going to do he said that's my wife inside the gutter I'm a military man this is my wife I paid the price for six months to get a yes from her. She's in that gutter. I don't know the consequence of my action. If you think I'm going to forgive you, listen, if it took God refusing to even give Jesus a chance for negotiation for your sake, then I assure you, whatever else it is that is holding you must leave you this night. Hallelujah. Do you believe me? We are going to pray and say, Lord, help my own belief. That, listen, listen, listen. That spirit that makes me keep wondering, can God do it? Listen, don't, don't make that foolish statement tonight. I, I was praying on the, tonight, before I came here, I was praying on the invitation card for my neighbor's wedding. If you know the story behind that dear woman, she shared it here, all kinds of things. When I met her, the devil was almost destroying her life. Had fibroid that was almost big like the size of a baby. She shared her testimony here. Supernaturally, that devil of fibroid came out the way a woman gives birth. It came out like that without surgery. And people were saying, ah, um, can you marry? Time has gone time has gone nonsense I prayed for the card and to the shame of the devil we are dancing to the heavens on the 6th of May <laughs> hallelujah brothers and sisters your limitation is self imposed Satan is a deceiver he comes to you and says but can they really hear your voice we are going to pray the only prayer I want you to pray tonight is to challenge unbelief and say, Lord, I lift my faith. I'm ready to respond based on my conviction. Lift your voice and begin to pray. I have a part to play. I lift up that wall of unbelief. Please pray, pray. You are able.
Are you praying? sense the anointing of the spirit i'd like you to mention everything that must live tonight listen please just follow these instructions i told you your response is where your faith is there are things that should go don't just keep quiet and watch them the bible says speak to the mountain open your mouth and begin to mention them don't keep quiet Mountain of financial hardship. Mountain of cancer. Mountain of mediocrity. Oh, you must go, you must go. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Say after me tonight, in the name of Jesus, the faith of God is at work in me. I have the faith to receive. I have the faith to believe. I have the faith to respond. Please listen. Do you know what happened in Acts chapter 4? Don't turn there. The Bible says they went to a gate called Beautiful. Please let me sit down, sir. Watch this. It says they saw a man who had been there. And he, he, he called on them for arms. And he thought they were going to give him arms. Peter and John. And he, he said silver and gold have I none he said but such as I have listen listen I give unto you what did he have he said in the name of Jesus rise up and walk the man was there sit down he was there. nothing happened why response did he believe Peter yes did he get a miracle no why he, he could not respond and the Bible says when Peter saw him he said who taught you faith he held his hand and said respond 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 and the bible says peter held his hand and he leaping stood the power of god is released at the point of response not before never before at the point of response when i began to minister here the lord was speaking to my spirit who gave me a guarantee that the power of god will move but as i began to speak I put pressure. It's left for him now to defend whether he really spoke to me or not. God will not just get up and act. Listen, it was God that put this miracle service. You're leaving your house to come is enough response already. Are you listening to me? You're going to say, Lord, I put pressure on your integrity. You ask us to come, we have come. Lift your voice and pray. Don't be afraid of saying it. Pray. Lord, you ask us to come. You are the one who anointed this meeting to be a miracle service. Now, oh God, we are here. Put pressure on his integrity. 
we have come oh god that you prove yourself shake it up shake it up we have come hallelujah hallelujah now keep standing everybody before we continue there are people here i don't want you to waste your time and i don't want to waste your time there are people here inside and outside in all the overflows outside you are yet to make this decision the bible says this is the testimony that god has given us eternal life he said and that life is in his son he says he who has the son has that life please we're out of time we have very few minutes and there is a lot to do now wherever you are you are saying man of god i have heard your word i have been struggling with this thing but tonight i truly want to dedicate everything my all to jesus christ or you are saying man of god i have come out for an altar call before but for some reason honestly the pressures of life have pushed me and i need to make my way straight with the lord i'm tired of where i am those two categories of people inside and outside i want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come out here right now god bless you quickly please i'll count just one to five if the holy ghost is speaking to you don't sit down thinking about it make your way very quickly one two run run like there's fire on the mountain especially those outside please you need to run run to jesus as you stand here please keep talking to him don't just stand looking at me god bless you run to jesus oh win that war win that war tonight this is an issue of your destiny koinonia can you appreciate them this is a harvest for the king of glory you're saying lord i'm tired of living my life my own way mismanaging my life on this Easter Friday, I give everything to you. Keep coming. You are saying, Lord, Easter Friday, you died for God so loved me. He died for me. I'm tired of living a life that is not worthy of my calling. There are still people outside. Please run and catch up quickly. Quickly. As the Holy Ghost is speaking to you and say, join them. Make your way quickly. You're saying, Lord, I'm tired. Tired of habits. Tired of addictions. Run to the cross. Come running. Come running. Come running to the mercy seat. Keep coming. All of you in front in one minute i'd like you to talk to jesus christ please no smiling and pitching one another this is a serious issue please pray open your mouth by yourself and say lord i i come to you genuinely the lord is ministering to me that there are three ladies outside who should join them you wanted to go and one of your friends stopped you please friend be careful don't stand against anybody's salvation this night make your way to the front please and join them i'm seeing three ladies outside that the lord is calling one of you your friend was trying to stop you the devil is a liar please make your way to the front and then there are two others god is speaking to join them quickly before we start praying those of you in front here talk to your maker no man condemns you the blood declares mercy said no help me i'm not gonna let you go i'm not gonna let you sleep away No man condemns you. The mercy, the mercy. Look 
at me. All of you in front. Some of you are crying. I don't care what you have done. This one decision. Remember Jesus. Every time the devil tries to condemn you, are you not the drunkard? Tell him the drunkard is that guy on the cross. Something is about to happen to you right now. Oh yes. Oh, you slept with somebody before coming here. You say, well, I don't know what you are talking about, but I've been crucified with Christ. He looked at the woman. He said, where are thine accusers? He said, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Lift your right hand and experience the power of the blood. The power of mercy. You just sing, there is a fountain filled with blood very softly as I pray for them. Hallelujah. Listen, brothers and sisters. Jesus can change your life. Don't stand here just making an emotional decision to go back. There is power in the blood of Jesus. Say after me, Lord Jesus, from the depth of your heart, say it again, Lord Jesus. I believe in you. And this night, I surrender everything. My life, my dreams, my hopes, my ambitions, I surrender it to you. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare that from today, I'm no longer a sinner. I've been crucified with Christ. And I have his life right now. Jesus has paid the price. I receive his life. And I declare that I'm a new creation. The old has gone. I begin a new journey. Satan, you no longer have any accusation against me. I pray for you. Keep your hands lifted. Father, on this Good Friday, we present these souls as trophies to you. This is a response to what Jesus did. Oh, receive these souls. Koinonia, present these souls as trophies of victory. Trophies of victory. This is the sacrifice. The rewards of the sacrifice. Hallelujah. I pray for you. I declare that your sins are forgiven. And the power of sin over your life is broken forever. Every guilt the devil uses. I don't care what it is tonight. The same way you wash a dirty cloth. In fact, the way you bring a new one. That's how the pages of your life is. He gives you a new beginning. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. A big congratulations to you. In the name of Jesus. Now listen. I want you to do this real fast. So you will join us. I'm about to minister to people now. And we are going to be very, very fast. Hallelujah. I'd like you to follow the gentleman. There are people all around they will lead you outside. We want your information. Please, you are born again now. Christians Hotel Lights. Make sure that you write your number, you write your name. Just follow the instructions. No fighting. Be patient until you get to your turn. They'll have your information and you quickly come back and join us in the service. Please do that as fast as possible so that um, you can participate fully in what is happening. God bless you. Every other person begin to pray in the spirit. Rise up on your feet and begin to pray in the spirit. You say, Lord, my time for visitation is here. I won't give up. No, I won't give up. I'll keep pressing on till my answer comes. I won't give up. Lord, I won't give up. I'll keep holding on. Until my change comes, Lord, I won't give up. Lord, I won't give up. I'll keep holding on till my answer comes. I won't give up. Lord, I won't give up. I'll keep pressing on. 
until my change comes. Please write your prayer requests very quickly and submit them. Let's do it quickly, please. One minute, everybody. If you have the prayer request of, of I understand that Koinonia is being streamed live right now. Can we honor God for that? Yes. It's being streamed live. We appreciate the media for their creativity. And for all our online people, we love you. The same power that is working here is the same power that will work everywhere you are in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So please, quickly, quickly, please, your prayer request. Listen, for those of us who are just coming, I, I don't want you to think this is some ritual. Believe me, God answers prayers here. God gave us a revelation. Hallelujah. And the revelation was the revelation of Hezekiah. Hallelujah. When he took the threat letter and the Bible says he put it before the Lord and said, Lord, behold their threatenings. So please write it very quickly and then ushers, let's be very fast. Please help some people with papers. Next time, maybe from maybe two or three months from now, we'll try to create expectation cards so that you can expectation cards leave her John leave her whatever she wants to do just let her down thank you hallelujah we are going to pray please quickly your loved ones please make sure the online community participate there is a God that answers prayers here Remember, we spoke about faith. Those outside, ushers, help them. If I were you, I will begin to prophesy over my request and say, I wrote you because you must live my life or you must come into my life. Hallelujah. Now please begin to pass your requests very quickly. Very quickly. Very quickly. My goodness. I tell you it's like a cloud that is heavy over this place. That's why I'm saying we should hurry up. You feel the rain of your love. You see the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven. Let us hear. See the rain of your love, feel the wind of your spirit, now the heartbeat of heaven, let us hear, so let it rain, let it rain, would you open the floodgates of heaven? pass the prayer request very quickly once we start we're just going to move um, let me encourage those who came with sick people or those who came for healing please make sure you get ready so that when it's time we'll just do that very very quickly hallelujah very quickly and then um, we'll be able to minister to people no matter what your condition is one of the things that we're going to be releasing today listen 
we had an encounter. Um, we just returned from Ekiti State. It's a lovely place. And um, listen, something really happened. As they picked us from the airport in Elorin to Ekiti, we passed a small village. Please listen. A small village, the border between Kwara State and Ekiti State. And I saw one of the most miraculous things in my life. I saw the obituaries of people. Listen. 132 years. 120 years. It's like nobody died except they were 100 and something. And in my mind, I was saying, Guinness Book of Record has been lying to us for long. And the, the interesting part of it, listen, is that the people, they are not on glasses, their dentitions are still exact, they don't use crutches, they are working firm. One of them was a senior apostle that died last year, 132, serving in the ministry, alive and doing well. When I saw those obituaries, I said there must be a grace for longevity. There, there is a covenant in this lineage that brings longevity. And I told the guys, I said, when we're coming back, we're stopping there. You can trust me. Oh, the law of honor. As soon as we got there, we stopped and we came out. We went to the women. They could not understand English. Please, quickly, with a request. And we told them, we said, we're pastors. We went to minister in Ekiti. And we're going back to the north. But we discerned that there is a special anointing, a strange grace for longevity. And we want them to release upon us. And then a lot of things happened that I may not say again. And then they took us to one old man. And the man just sat on his chair. When we went, they interpreted. And they told him, we came to receive that unction for longevity. The man looked at us. He said, we should all kneel down. And we got down on our knees. And this guy began to pray and prophesy. He's on record. I'm sure maybe one of these days we'll play it. He was in Yoruba. I didn't care what he was saying, Ejimi. All I know is that he was speaking a language and my spirit was receiving it. This guy kept prophesying, releasing that grace and that mantle upon that territory upon us. I said, that's right. I knew that there's no mistake about this. The moment we finished with him, honored him, sowed the seed into his life, appreciated all the people. We were on our way going back to the car and I felt in my spirit to go back and thank the women. I went back to thank them and I saw a particular woman and they said, this man, 132 years, this is his wife. Ah. When they said that, I said, interpret for them that we came for. And the woman looked at me. They can bear me witness. She just tapped me and said, please follow her. We followed her into a room. She just opened the door and I saw pictures from one side to the other. She started showing me the pictures I thought he was the wife of the man when he was in his old age, you know, like Keturah. That was the one and only woman he married. That means that woman should be at least maybe 120 years or something. Alive. These guys can bear me witness. No glasses, no crutches, no nothing. I said, what kind of grace is this? Brothers and sisters, there are mysteries. Have you heard me say this thing? And when we finished, before we finished talking, we all got down on our knees and we told the woman, she first started singing a song. I don't know what it was. I don't care what it was. This woman spent like 10 minutes just letting it out from her spirit. And do you know, I, was, I don't know if I was sharing with them, I felt as if they put a crown on my head. That's how as I was feeling. I knew I got this thing. Immediately she got it. I told her, I said, let's snap. I held her hands and we got to the place we'll show you the video and we snapped and i said i'm standing face to face with a woman 100 and something alive dentition complete can speak no glasses ah it was you i was thinking about i was happy to transport that grace brothers and sisters we brought it it must land on you tonight <laughs> hallelujah I, met, I was just looking, I was looking to empty everything I had. I said, what kind of grace is this? We went to minister in a university called Afe Babalola University. The man himself is 86 years. Alive and doing well. 
in those regions, if you are 80 years, you are still a child. Believe me. Then when we were returning, I saw the shock of my life. 141 years. One, how many? 41. I saw the obituary. You just died. 141. And then I got it. Let's see the devil that will manufacture himself from anywhere to come and take my life. No. See, listen. If you don't believe in transference of grace, you will die young. Don't you ever think it was because of the food they are eating. I didn't see any hospital around here. I just saw a church. And people, is you can be 190 and not be able to talk. But you are 141. The guy, 132, was still serving as a man of God. You are cooking by yourself. And you died and left the wife. The, the mama tapped me. In this place, once you are 60 years, you hold crutches. What cause is that? I always believed it, but now that I've seen it, ah, there's that song that says, my eyes have seen. Don't play it. My eyes have seen it. There are many strange things that will fall today. Listen, if you care, you can receive. If you don't, when we were coming, we were in the plane, and the plane was bouncing like a football. I just remember that old woman. I said, Glenn, you are joking. I'm surrounded by too many mysteries. Please believe me. Hallelujah. 86 years, still a lecturer. 89 years, still a lecturer. Alive. 100 and something years. You see the women as if they are 50 something. But some of them are in their 90s, 80s, 100s. That's grace, brothers. It's not about anybody praying for longevity. There is an anointing that comes upon territory. And tonight, in the course of the meeting, is when it's time to pray that, please receive it. We need to be alive to do a lot for the kingdom. Pray and say, Lord, my spirit is open to receive everything you have for me. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Why do we do this all the time? We do this because there are spirits, listen, that stand in the way of people's destinies. Don't think that deliverance is just something we do mechanically. I'm about to pray because there are people who came here. There are those who represent families. All tasks that have tied the destinies of men down. I'm going to pray. I tell you, I sense a heavy anointing. Please, the moment that happens, I like you not don't just fall and stand up, begin to pray and receive and reject everything that is not of God. Father, your word says, Upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. It says there shall be holiness, and it said, The sons of Jacob shall receive their possessions. Therefore, I pray every spirit every altar every manipulation of darkness that is responsible for the tragedy in any man's life inside the first overflow second and third as you shout jesus like fire let it begin to land on people right now one two three I command those spirits right now right now my goodness my goodness inside outside like fire is coming upon people is coming upon people is coming upon people hallelujah the Lord is giving me a very foolish instruction just lift your right hand that's what I hear right hand my goodness you don't need to shout just lift your right hand. Lift the drums. Just lift your right hand. This, don't mind me. Let me do my stupid thing. The Lord is giving me an instruction. I see at least up to 33 people. The Lord is just saying I should stretch my hands. 
the moment that happens i'm seeing like a stone being broken these are families altars in families lord according to your word right now at the count of three all the people and families involved i stretch my hands one two three let it happen right now right now right now right now right now just keep your right hand lifted Sheba Baba Kata. altars 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 right now in the name of the lord jesus bring them out those strange altars strange altars hallelujah lift your hands the lord is saying he is visiting fertility issues fertility issues barrenness whatever it is lift your hands at the count of three as you shout jesus anyone connected to you or anyone here under a spell of infertility at the count of three be broken one two three break 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 right now right now right now infertility there are some ladies feeling fire fire around your stomach fire around your womb fire around your womb fire around your womb is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking is breaking shake it is breaking hallelujah please lift your hands the lord is speaking to me there are people here everything you touch dies in your hand lift your hands please no matter what it is if it's a relationship it dies jakatarata mandereto shota at the count of three let fire fall every cause of bad luck at the count of three shout jesus one two three go 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 right now those altars those altars right now everything your hand touches dies people come around to help you and they leave you it's changing right now it's changing right now it's changing right now hallelujah sisters lift your hands any stranger that visits you in dreams lift your hands speaking to you planting things the lord is giving this instruction every spirit husband just for ladies i tell you many people will be free right now at the count of three is like fire that will fall on you lord let it fall every entity coming to oppress these people planting barrenness bad luck one two three take it take it take it take it let them go now inside and outside let them go now let them go now let them go now. Let them go now. My dear, tap that lady for me. Yes, that lady nodded. An angel is touching you. He's bringing a miracle for you right now. That's what I see. I see like cold sensation coming to your head. A miracle. 
And as it's happening to her, may it happen to you right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lift your hands and begin to pray over your request. Let it rain. Please pray. Go ahead and just prophesy. And say, Lord, this marks the end of it. The Bible says, believe in the Lord your God. Pray, pray. Don't look at me. Pray. Open your mouth and pray. Shekete preskate parada balaraba Shopra tosko topraska parata pariada bash In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ Father we turn Go ahead and pray Lord my request is turned into a testimony I must testify by the anointing of the Holy Spirit Let the ministry of angels begin to bring to pass every single request in this place. In the name of Jesus, we command the foundations of the earth. We command the firmaments. We command the waters to begin to align themselves towards the fulfillment of this request. We lift every body placed upon the shoulders of men by the anointing of God's spirit. And we set these ones free in the name of Jesus mighty and everlasting God standing upon your promise to us upon this altar the heavenly portals opened in this place we command a performance of the requests the desires placed here tonight in the name of Jesus we decree the heavens answer speedily everyone trusting you for the fruit of the womb receive in the name of Jesus promotion from on high receive in the name of Jesus an end to demonic oppression. It happens now in the name of Jesus. Blind eyes open. Deaf ears open. Destinies moved forward. In the name of Jesus. Satanic burdens removed. In the name of Jesus. We thank you Lord because speedily. According to the seasons of life. They receive a performance. In the matchless name of Jesus we decree. Amen Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please rise up on your feet and receive the prophecy you can. I saw a spirit and, and I'm praying for the students now. Please listen. When I was outside ministering, I saw a spirit like bees released to produce massive failures in the exam that is being written in the name that is above all names. I pray for everyone here. The kind of performance you have never seen. Receive it in the name of Jesus. The kind of performance. I pray from the depth of my heart. The kind of performance you have never seen. Receive it in the name of Jesus. for favor where you have labored and tried and it didn't work beginning from tonight step into a new dimension of favor step into a new dimension of favor every direction you have been praying and asking the Lord to give you between now and next Friday receive that direction Receive that direction. I want to pray for business people. Anyone in business, lift your hands. The strategy. The strategy that you need to win. In the name of Jesus, receive it right now. 
may it appear to you in dreams in the name of Jesus Christ everything that has died in your hands I command it to come back alive in the name of Jesus Christ now I want to pray for you father that old Baba prayed and released upon our lives the mantle of longevity 132 still alive I pray for you please receive it me too I received it from the depth of my heart Lord you know that I wanted this not for self but for the house at 70 you are still standing strong at 90 you are still moving strong until you get to 120 no devil takes your life in the name of Jesus hear me the force that immunes people from accidents comes upon your life right now the force that immunes people from terrorism and the wickedness it comes upon your life right now that spirit that kills people at the prime of their life when they labor and about to enter it takes their lives it leaves your life forever 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 hallelujah may you see your children's children to the fifth generation believe what i'm saying i've seen human beings bodily carrying this revelation you step into it in the name of jesus therefore anyone here that death is eyeing that you will not see the next miracle service or you will not see the end of this year i don't know how the plan is going on in the realm of the spirit but i avert it right now I have it right now the same way you will live long physically everything that is good in your life lives long with you your health lives long with you your wisdom lives long with you faithful lives long with you two prayer points quickly where you have been rejected you step into a place I've experienced it all let me tell you something hallelujah i will never forget you know jimmy knows the story in 2007 i remember that time i went to collect a loan from a bank remember the story i went to collect a loan from the bank we had done everything and then when it was now time for them to give me the loan they embarrassed me i was humiliated the same people who were helping me, it was as if a charm came upon them. And I looked at that person and I vowed that till I die, till I go to be with the Lord, I will not collect loan from anybody living or dead. I made that determination from the depth of my heart. I said, Lord, if you cannot honor me, let me die like that. I pray for someone here. See, listen, if doors are closing against you, it's demonic. Don't ever say it's because i don't know so 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 bad. if if the person knew me it's a lie there is a man to the bible says everyone loved esther who looked at her like a garment you can wear it i pray that honor that brings receptivity receive it right now oh come on your amen is not loud enough receive it right now hallelujah the Bible says you shall be as a delightsome land. You know what a delightsome land is? Well desired. In other words, at any point you are seen, you are invited. I don't know who has disqualified you, but I pray for you. They may use your background. They may use whatever. Let grace qualify you tonight. Let grace qualify you tonight. Koinonia, I pray for you. Honor that you have never seen in your life from even people who can give birth to you begin to receive it strange honor in high places strange honor in high places in the name of jesus
Wave your hands and give God all the praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Kateka Post. Kate Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and make a path. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.